In this inaugural episode of Hashtag Highly Sought After, we have with us a prolific pink personality, a Singapore icon that has amassed millions of followers all around the world. She is none other than Wendy Chen, or more fondly known as Xia Xie. Uh, yay! I always feel that when I say Xia Xie, we need to like do some effects and like snowing. And oh my gosh, so teasy! <laughs> yeah, but it's fun. So, um, I mean, you have been doing this for 15 years, I calculated. 2003 yeah. was when you started. Oh no, 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 16. Hey, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, my math is really bad. 16, 16 long, years. 16, yeah. 16 it, oh years. my gosh, it's like makes you feel really old. If you if you raise a kid at 2003, the kid is already going JC. Oh my already. god, it's true, <laughs> it's true, it's true. So, what were some of the words, right, that people have been used, uh, that used on you? The good, the bad, the ugly. What were some words you can think about? Well, rude. People say I'm rude. rude. Um, people say what else? Uh, you, what I use good words like a bit brave high say No, it's okay. But <laughs> the fact is there are people. If you look at her comments, you see a lot of very positive words too. Like but right. what, what was some that? Okay la, I'll eye? give like two bad and two good okay. So rude one. Uh, good. Let me think. Brave. Usually mm. they will say that. Um, then bad one. Let me see. Um, I get called a midget a lot. But that's like that's like description of the face. So okay, let okay. me think. Um, vein maybe. Okay. Vein, yeah. Veins is that bad? Yeah, yeah. I think they use it in a bad okay, context. Use it in the bad yeah, context. but mostly like just the opinions part like Mostly or like ah stupid lah, stupid or people like say stupid. Okay, so or, like, rude ignorant lah. Yeah, this kind. Then the good one is very good brave. one, brave. Uh, like uh, mm. I got one that I see a lot. Very intelligent. The way you put forth arguments. Oh, you, you okay. Makes sense. You're not like just like, a brash <laughs> girl just making your point. Yeah. Were they accurate? Like, is that is that who you were even before you start your blogging? I would think so because. The I, I come from an era where nobody actually go into blogging with the express purpose of being famous or leveraging on it in any way. So can you imagine a world where you actually start your social media and you never knew that you could actually become popular, that you can get sponsorships, that one day you can make this your full-time job. It was never done before. Yeah. So it's like, I'm really like the cave woman who is like literally playing with the spark. The, the trollblazer, the, essentially. The, yeah, yeah. the spark of the stone yeah. and thinking, hey, this look like got thing coming out, but you don't know what fire is for because or, or how good this thing would be, yeah. you know, because it's just not invented yet. So what point. got you to even get started on blogging in the I, first place? I have always been a, a big extrovert, so mm. I love sharing, I love interacting with people, and um, I just love telling stories, yeah, and sharing my opinions. And I always feel like, for me, like, when I feel upset about something, uh, I need to vent it out to feel better. It becomes an avenue for you to yes. kind of communicate. So it, it's just my form of therapy in a, in a way. I write it out and when people agree with me, I'm like, yes, yeah, right? Like yeah. then it, it just makes me feel so much better. It's like the, today's version of Instagram where you do a poll and you go like, yes or no? and then uh, uh, A little like, bit of yes. that, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So do you still remember your first post? <laughs> I can't really laughter. remember. I had something very, very childish and stupid about like my crush or something like that. Ta da! So, let me, let me highlight to you, okay? Her first post was uh -huh. on 23rd April 2009. No, 3. Hey, 2003, okay? And it was posted at 3 24 am. <laughs> so, something never changed. She also sleep early. Yeah, very nocturnal. And uh, I mean, I felt that it's very symbolic. Your very first sentence into the blogging world is, is, is very symbolic. Okay, nobody has done an analysis on yes, this. Yes, okay, I, I okay. did. And, and I, I don't even remember. It's scarily symbolic. You know what she said? What? Today is eventful. That was your very first st statement to the world. Today is goosebumps. eventful. I totally did not remember saying yeah, that. Yeah, okay. today is eventful. Obviously, after that, you have a long paragraph. Right. I but, don't, uh, was it really you, eventful? Yeah, what, what you happened? said that because, oh, okay. So what happened? I'll read to you. Okay? <laughs> first, I went to school for DVPA. So what's a DV, what's DVPA? A class, I okay, guess. Okay, class. And I got pissed with both Gwen and Aaron respectively because of her face and his face. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I like, was 18, so don't judge me. Don't judge okay. me. I think Gwen laughs too loud for non-funny, just meant to piss Wendy off jokes by anyone who think they might like to poke fun at a short pitch. So it's very interesting how in that simple first sentence, we have already seen a lot about yourself. Like you even poke fun at yourself. Right. I mean, nobody called himself a bitch, a uh, shot, <laughs> right? Uh, Aaron is a sick backstabber complete with thorn. Ah, well. 
But the second paragraph was very, very interesting. He's reading it in good English. Uh, by the way, when it's written there, it's like terribly written. Already, huh? Like, Already you know, alien, you spell very... don't, D-O-N-T. See? Like, I spell it as D-U-N, for example. It's oh, damn disgusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And cause is like C-O-Z. I still write that, because but, like, because it's too long. So. so you see, most of us, those of you who know her, you're like, yeah, that's very typical Sasha, right? She's very open with her words and she's very expressive and, <laughs> and she will say as it is, call a spade a spade. I think that's what makes you very well known. But most people would probably not read past that and see another side of you, which I saw. And that's actually the next paragraph. That's why I say that if I study this text, right, much of like literature, right? It, it really kind of describes you. That I had two readers at that time. Only two readers? Yes. Ooh, that's yourself. why I can go and like talk shit about my classmates. Oh, because nobody knows. Like, yeah. Then why you never delete it off when, when you become like more well-known? Because your friends would definitely go read it. Right? I don't know why. Eh. Or you never even change their names. Yeah, I never. The next paragraph. <laughs> I like to think that Gwen is a gift from God to come to my life to stretch my patience to its best limit. She's in fact someone who will do good for me in my life. I just don't, and she used D-U-N, I don't like to think that angels look like that. It's a horrible thought. Digressing. <laughs> I met Eddie for dinner today. So, I That's so stupid. That what, what's very unique about you is you don't rent for the sake of renting, renting but you, you have a point. You have a point of view. There was no point. The point is just to the talk patience. shit about my The patience. Right? It's very reflective, don't you feel? That people are sent to our lives to piss stuff off, but also to kind of make us grow. So I felt that, that it's quite mature for how old are you back then? 18. 18 years old, right? No bad. I, I don't think I sincerely already. meant it. Oh, you don't mean it? Yeah? I don't think so. I just wrote it as like, you, you know. You see, that's the problem with words, think. right? You, you cannot <laughs> sense the tone. Maybe if you do a video, you'll feel like, yeah. oh, she's so sarcastic. No, the, the point of saying that is yeah. to say that she doesn't look like an angel. That's the point of that sentence. It's not like to teach me a lesson. Guys, I saw the best in her. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you're I, wrong. I read her totally wrong. So I guess it's true. Uh, we wear lenses. Right? Maybe lah. I don't know what I was thinking at that point. It's so many years ago. It's like now, thinking 16 years ago. I'm curious. My question is, most of us are very curious about is What was your biggest struggle back then when you first started? Struggle? Mm. I think there are two phases. Phase one is when you were not even sure that you're going to make this a career. right? You're just blogging for the sake of blogging. At that point, at you that mean? Point, yeah. You mean for monetarily wise, is it? Like, yeah, okay. your phase one. Phase one is you're just blogging for blogging right, purpose. Right, right, yes. Phase two is when you start to realise that, oh my god, this could be a lucrative career. Right, right. So let's talk about phase one first, okay? Okay. When you were blogging, were there any struggles? Do you face any challenges? Mm, I think the whole dealing with fame thing, like, okay. uh, changes your uh, friendship dynamics a lot. Even at the beginning? Oh, definitely. But I mean, like, it's like, just weird to suddenly see your good friend become famous. You know, how are you supposed to feel about that? And I am very aware la, that, you know, because I love attention, right? Yeah. So if this happened to my friend, I might feel a bit jealous or like, you know, just yeah. rest and like, well, every time go out, it's always attention is on you. Well, gosh, are we talking about you again? You know, kind of thing. Like, right. so I, am, I, am, I feel very sensitive to this kind of things when I am around people. So I try to like always tone it down. Yeah. I don't like it in the start lah. I mean, I still don't really like it when I'm out with my friends and people pay a lot of attention to me and yeah. ask me, okay, I, then my friends, they're very sian, right? Like, it's just very uncomfortable for me. Correct. Like, you know, sometimes, like people even like, when they meet me, they want a photo, they will just shove the camera to my friend. Like, <gasps> it's like my assistant like that. Like, hey, can you help us take a photo? Like, like sometimes they don't even ask, can we take a photo of you? They're talking to so me. Rude, uh. And then they, okay. their eyes still look at me, they just take the camera. Oh dear. So, so your friend feel invisible around yeah, you. Yeah, so I, I, I don't like that feeling like, because I put myself in their shoes, I wouldn't like it. You know, so, and just dealing in general with a lot of the dynamics with my friends. I remember my core group of secondary school friends, they said, like, why is it that now, they, they said, right, that I was getting a bit like, conceited with yes. the whole blog popularity thing and yes. like a bit obsessed over it like whole, every single day I would blog yes, sometimes correct. twice so like you know they would be like you know I, you hold them must take photo and then they said how come our opinions don't matter to you anymore like cause when we say something you just say huh but all the blog readers agree with me what? Uh, yeah then they, they felt a bit slighted so I was very careful to sort of handle that part well um, but it, it was everything was fine nothing mm, there was no falling out or anything yeah. so i still maintain a lot of my secondary school friends like till today la. so it. it's still okay yeah so wow well, so you you were very worried about how your friends deal with your popularity in, in a way yeah and when you know? was it i mean you blocked for a while right i uh, you actually had hun 1000 quite nerdy uh, actually like super calm. yeah you have 1282 like... posts on, on your ah, blog really <laughs> At which point in the 1,282 posts, right, you, you discovered that, oh my god, you actually got the attention of Singapore, at least at the start. 
How do you know you, you're getting famous? Okay, I don't know which blog post it is, yes. but I, I remember somewhere in my poly years. So, that I started when I was, I think, 18. Yeah. So, poly years is still... 21, no? Uh, until then, why is it? Okay, somewhere maybe second year poly. Yeah. Uh, no, no, poly 17, 18, about, ni- about 19, oh, maybe okay. about one year into it. I started realizing that a lot of like, that people would randomly come up to me in school to say that, you know, I read your blog. But I never truly felt like Singapore knew who I was. Yes. Uh, it was more like the young, very young crowd. If you ask, I always feel like I am not famous until I eat at a hawker store and the uncle asked me, to take a photo with his food and put it on the wall oh, next to people okay. like Fiona Xie yeah, or like yeah. Zoe Tay, right? Got or it. even like Lee Hsien Long, I'm right? I'm sure so, people now do that. No, right? no, actually they still don't really. But Maybe sometimes, sometimes, you, you yeah, they will just say like, hey, this is not No, they don't want. They ask all oh, the Fiona Xie all this for, uh. so they are not Paisei. So it's just the issue is really they don't know who I am. Maybe they don't like, know social media. Yeah, well. I always don't feel like I'm famous until I sit in a cab and I know for sure the cab driver will know who I am. Okay. Yeah, so it's only uh, young people, like, yeah. So at, at a certain point, I started to realise, this is beyond my friends already. Like, because mm. strangers were coming up to me. Yeah. I knew that uh, from the start, I think within the next, like, two weeks of blogging, I had about 300 unique views a day, which was actually... From two, uh, leh, back then. Yeah, yeah it was two, just like these two, two, I don't know how it spread. Like, yeah. so, and it was not like I was advertising it anywhere. Yeah, exactly. It's really word, pure word of mouth. But I think people were really stuffed of like things to visit online exactly. at that time because websites were shitty. It was like the era of GeoCities. Yeah, you know? Oh dear, yeah. I remember GeoCities. Yeah, so you create your website, blinking words. Yeah, you, know? you have nothing to do online. Yeah. Literally, people were bored. They were going to bot.com. Like, and, and you know what, guys? <laughs> Stay with us on this interview because we're going to go into the tactics of social media in a very short while, but we are still at Safra's <laughs> backstory, which strangely, we don't really get to hear a lot about, right? So phase one. Friends, you were very concerned about how your friends deal with it. Mm. Um, that was your biggest challenge. Then, at what point do you decided to make this a career? Um, I think I repeated this story a few times, but I'll just say it again. Yeah, like, um, yeah. I met this dude uh, called Trodrick. He's my good friend now. Yeah. So, he is a really entrepreneurial sort of person. Mm. And um, he started a t-shirt design brand. Mm. He no longer sells it. Like. He okay. actually works for his family business, but he Got was it. just doing it for fun, selling t-shirts online with his own design and slogan and he just uh, he, he found my blog and then he was like can I advertise with you oh, and uh, okay. I'll so called like be my brand ambassador and um, I'll let you wear my t-shirts uh, you have to wear it like four times in a month at least in photos so which year was that? Uh, 2004 Five, I think. Oh my God, this four. guy is way ahead of his time. No, huh? yeah, he is. That it never has happened before. That's like what's happening now. Yes, he did it ten years so ago. So this is really like it's crazy. Yeah. Like he started, he literally started. It's it, it's never ever happened in the yeah. past. So he said, wear it on your blog, and I'll give you three hundred dollars. <gasps> A month. Okay. Yeah. Three t-shirts and you gotta earn some money. Three hundred dollars. I was like, wow, so much money. Yeah. <laughs> Free t-shirt, of course. And yes. I post pictures anyway, yeah. every day. So I have to be wearing something. Yeah. So uh, instead of repeating, oh my god, I might as well wear his t-shirts. Yeah. Pretty cute designs. Um. So he was the one who started this, and then he, uh, he also advised me. He said, look, you have a, a golden window opportunity. I don't know how long it's going to last, but while it lasts, you need to leverage on mm. it because the marketing, uh, advertising mediums are very stale. It's all traditional media. And this is a new, like people, okay, okay the, so the t-shirt sold really well. Yeah. And he said that, you know, like I'm very influential. He said mm. that from the start. And he said, uh, marketers, once they realize how good you are, they will all come running to you. Because he says it's so cheap, yeah. right? And compared to a TV ad. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. it's so much more effective. Yeah. And so many people see it. So that was, at that time it was maybe, um, a thousands, like a few thousands a day yeah. for in, in terms of views. So that was what he said. And then mm. he said, you really need to work on this. And then he said, why are you... Because I was a very poor student at that time. Mm. So I would just do very cheapo things all the time, you know? So like... <laughs> like what? <laughs> like for example, <laughs> go into the MRT and go very close to the person in front of me so that I can save on the MRT fee. <gasps> to go inside the gantry. Last time can do that, right? <laughs> can. The, uh-huh. Before it closed, if you I jump in, uh. like, I will do that, yeah. It's no wonder people say you're brave. <laughs> I could not <laughs> have the courage cheapo. to do that. So, like, yeah, like, my bus, uh, you know, last time got bus stamp. Correct. So, you show the uncle, Correct. right? Yes. So, I, I realised a way to, like, get out of buying bus stamps. Oh. Like, for months and months, I just wouldn't buy it. So, you get an old bus stamp, and then, while the 
Do you still have bus stamps no now? More oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm no longer. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so anyway, you have to show the, the, that month's bus stamp because yes. it costs a certain amount of money, yes, right? That's correct. So I take the money that my mother gave me for the bus stamp yeah. and then I use it for myself. Yeah. It's like fifty dollars, very yeah. little, only la. <laughs> So like you know, I would just. Okay, okay, search in my bag for very long for the thing. Uh-huh. But actually, I know where okay, it is. Okay, for the people who are not from Singapore, means uh, pretend, pretend. Pretend, right? like, just yeah. pretending to yeah. search for it. And then the bus driver have no choice but to drive off, right? Because people yeah. are waiting for him. So while he's impatient, like, oh, like he's got to drive, he had his eyes on the road. Then I will just flash, go. Because he's already driving, he cannot be bothered to check me anymore. <laughs> yeah. How did you come up with this idea? Just... Huh? I just like, oh, stroke of brilliance. I was just like, that's how I avoided paying for a whole year of bus fare. Got it. Okay, so creative. <laughs> yeah. So it's I was very so cheap. Creative. So, okay, okay, yeah. don't, don't uh, get distracted from yeah. the story. So he said, why are you still trying to pay for it? Because I like colourful hair and stuff, yes. right? Why are you still paying for your hair and your nails? He said, like, people will be so happy to sponsor it for you. And if they don't want to, they are idiots. Yeah. He said that. So he told me, go, I said, how am I supposed to do a boy pie say? Excuse me, do you want to sponsor? Boy pie say means, uh, what, so thick skin. So yeah, so thick skin, right? Yeah. I cannot be so unabashed. Go and like, tell business owners, uh-huh. hey, do you want to give me free nails? Then they'll be like, who the f*** are you? Yeah. What is a f- blogger? Never heard of such a thing, yeah, right? exactly. At, at this point, it was like, only young people knew who I was. Right. And people who are in marketing and stuff, they don't know who I am. So he just said, Make a portfolio for yourself. Put in all these newspaper articles that are written about you, and provide all your stats. You know, and tell them how many views you have and everything. Mm. So they will see all this and they can decide for themselves. Anyway, yeah, exactly. it's very cheap for them. Right. What what is it to them? You know, it's um a few uh, giving you a few free nails. It's right. not that expensive. It's not like gonna pay you. Right? Yeah. So he, that's what he said lah. So I just like okay. Well, I guess I'll go try. Yeah. So. I did, and that was the start of all blogger hair sponsorship nails sponsorships. Like nowadays, every other influencer has one. Yeah. But at the start, it was so. My is two zero zero five. Yeah. So uh, two zero zero four, something four. really oh, early. Yeah. yeah. But it was just like so difficult for me. So I I went to this hair salon. I really like at that time it's mm. Kimich. Uh, I somehow managed to ask to speak to the the boss. Yes. And she met me, and uh, she really had a meeting. I was so stressed out because I was this eighteen year old yeah. girl. You know, it's just like. I had no agent anything, you know. I was just standing there in my portfolio like, Jesus Christ, I need to like promote yeah. myself. Ah. So I went there. <laughs> I was like, hey, um, you know, work with you guys and blah, blah, blah. And then she was like, okay, fine, can. And I was like, oh, really? Then she was like, yeah, but you're going to the student one. Oh. <laughs> so I'm just a giddy fake lah for student yeah. cut hair. But even if you want to be being cut by the students part, yes. right? You actually still have to pay money. It's just cheaper. Okay. Yeah. So it's a cheaper free hair sponsorship. You out. Yeah. Uh, so it, I, I went and I was yeah. very happy to get it. Really, really happy. Because I really like light colored hair because it takes so expensive to go and bleach, right? True. So I like, can oh, free, I'm very good. And to be fair, they did quite okay job. Um, so all this started and then after that, um, one day I had a controversy on my blog about some handicapped toilet thing. And then it went on newspapers, went yeah. viral, and then she called me and she was like Wendy, I saw this thing. I unfortunately we need to drop you, so oh. they dropped me from the ambassadorship. How do you feel? I was very angry. Angry, not yeah. devastated. Angry. That was. I was. Like I, first don't, I don't. I don't care about her anymore. You know, yeah. like you fuck your company. Okay, yeah. I hope you all talk Okay, but like. What were you angry about? I was very angry because I hate making my haters feel happy. That's my number one pet peeve. Got it. And they are gloating about it. They are so happy that this thing happened. I'm just like, Ugh, how dare you? Like, you know, like you're making them happy. And from then on, I vowed never to be like an ambassador unless I expressly sign it in the contract that you can't fucking drop me for controversial reasons. Yeah. Even she knew what she was getting into. Yeah. She knew how my blog was like. Correct. How how can she just like suddenly I'm gonna drop you? You know what I mean? Exactly. Like it's Got over. It. Yeah. And to me, I obstinately still feel that I did no wrong in the article. You guys do your own research you know? about that article. Yeah. Right? yeah. So the article is just about like me going uh talking about handicapped toilets. Right. And right. I just feel like normal people are entitled to use it. Lah. I never felt that it was a like a parking lot where it's like only handicapped people can use lah. And, so, and just a side note, yeah. guys, one of the things that I felt Sasha is very good at is she's able to pick up trending topics or be able to find a good story. <laughs> And we'll talk about that later during the content creation bit. Because for you to have a voice, you need to be able to talk about things that people care about. Obviously, people care a lot about handicapped toilets. Do right? they? Yeah. <laughs> now, if you, for you it to wasn't, it, it was definitely yeah. not a trending topic. Because sometimes when yeah. I vlog things, I know that it will be controversial. Yeah. So I always try to sort of like think about what people will argue first and give up my, my defense. View, because yeah. by the time you come out with a second blog post, like people, half the people are not reading. It's like what we learn in university, our general paper. Yeah, right? you need to argue. Yeah, yeah. In my mind, somebody's arguing with me. So, but that one, the yes. handicapped toilet one, yeah. 
absolutely did not ex- expect a backlash. I did not, did not expect it. Because for girls, when you go into a normal toilet, let's say everyone is queuing up for the five cubicles, right? Yes. If the empty one is the handicap one, you just You'll go, go in. Yeah, even guys so yeah. I, I really, I, I'm huh? <laughs> I was so shocked, you know, and I was so shocked to realize that the my friend Trodrick, the one who did the t shirt, yes. he actually said he disagreed with me. He disagreed with yeah, me. Yeah, he well. said, okay. like, you know, he's not offended over my point of view, but he disagrees. He thinks that it should be only for handicapped people. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. but he didn't drop me. He said yeah. that I'm not going to drop you. I, I support that you. You have your own opinion and yeah, exactly. you go. So he was the only one who stayed true. Like, and I had a new sponsor who dropped me as well. Yeah. Uh, but would you say that sometimes comeback is a lot sweeter, right? <laughs> so how do you, what was your comeback? I didn't really you have any? a comeback. Or oh, you looked for how long? It means you try to like, <laughs> for how long? And then boom, the next good thing can happen for you. I mean, I, I can't remember. I think like there was no immediate like, you know, like good part to that. You okay. know, it, except that I guess now my hair sponsorship and new sponsorship are a lot better, la, So f- yeah. them, la, You know, like yeah. So <laughs> quality, yeah, right? yeah. Of course, but you know, it's just at that time I was just very, very annoyed that the haters were so gloaty. Could about you say it. that that is your biggest challenge in your entire career? It's about dealing Chal- with haters. No, I love the that part. Oh, they were the, yeah. the highlight for your career. I, I wouldn't say is that that is a challenge for me at all. What yeah. would be your challenge then? I mean, phase um, two. Phase two is where you make this a career, like today. Career? You monetarily wise. You no, mean? it could be any any challenge, um, like a real I, legit challenge for you. I think the biggest challenge is dealing with the fact that people around me are affected by my fame. So still is sometimes still in a is. negative way. Uh, not okay. not that the front the friends one is more like their relationship with me. Okay. This one is like if I'm famous, people attack my mother, attack my brother. <gasps> So oh. I don't like that. It really okay. irritates me a lot. Okay. Like, oh, I they take my get child. You, get everybody around Correct, you. and it really hurts me because I they cannot hurt me. There's yeah. nothing you can say that will hurt me. But you can hurt me by hurting people. Yeah, it's I like don't. watching movie, right? So, I can't hurt the hero. I hurt everybody around the hero. Correct. So okay. I mean, it's very evil of them lah because it's, these are innocent people, right? Yeah. But to them, they don't care. They just want to see me hurt. You see? How do you deal with it? Huh? I don't let them see that I'm hurt. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because it gives them satisfaction. Why would I do that? Fuck your. I will just lead the best life that I ha- I can and just let you all feel very, very upset about it. <laughs> so that's like your motivation. That's, that's right? definitely my motivation for right. sure. And yeah. later on, we'll talk about that. How mm. do we deal with critics and haters as well? So guys, that's Xia Xue and uh, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your backstory with us. Today, right, you have uh, 608,000 IG followers, 240,000 YouTube subscribers. Big brands have taken you global because I follow her, right? <laughs> so at Japan, I remember you were in Japan recently as well. And you're, like. which other countries are you going? Um, I'm going to Milan and <gasps> Europe uh, in like three days. <laughs> oh my god, for fashion. Yeah, uh? yeah for fashion. Like my first time for fashion actually. Okay. Yeah, so but I'm just going as my friends plus one actually. So Who cares? Not really. Be there still. <laughs> not really what other countries influencer. have you been to because of this career? Uh, like so many. brands. Um, the more memorable ones that are like yeah. kind of weird, like Georgia, for example. I went to Georgia for like a work conference to uh-huh. talk about social media. I have a very loyal fan there. Uh, her name is Mariam, like from Georgia, not US Georgia, like the uh, Europe. The Europe, Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> so I, that's a country that, you know, most people wouldn't, most yeah. Singaporeans wouldn't travel exactly, to yeah. normally. So when I went there, it was like really cool. Um, this looks like normal part of Europe, like, actually, any part of Europe. So I went there for a work trip and um, like, Places like just the normal cities also mm. have like Tokyo or like you know Zurich. Um, uh, I recently went to Hawaii. Yes. Like uh, I went to Maldives with uh, Benefit, and I was like, wow, my bucket list is it's like well, it's so checking, nice. Checking, checking, yeah. Checking, right? So this job of representing brands, uh, sharing and teaching to your followers kind of take you around the world. What I'm very curious about is, what do you think you have done this what 15, 16 years already? There must be something you did right. What do you think that, that is? I think I was very lucky. I started very early. Okay, so okay, being so, early helps. So, um, I think starting early in my platform helped a lot because uh, that firstly, there wasn't any competition. Yeah. Um, it was very, the, the barrier of entry so low. You know, nowadays, if you want to be an influencer, you have to look so good, you have to this and that. So there's so many people to compete with yeah. you and it's so saturated. Yes. And, in the past, the internet is very boring. There's very few things you can do online. Right. So now the internet is so full of interesting things to do. It's very difficult to get someone's attention. Yes. Um, so that was then. I had help then by being early. Yep. And then subsequently, I think it is coming, uh, being consistent and never really kind of giving up on that. Um, consistent about what? Consistent about keeping up with uh, giving content. Be it blogging, which I don't really do anymore, yeah. or, or, or 
following out of Instagram or going with the trend of like videos. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. so it's like consistent because there are some famous bloggers back then who decide to just give up. Mm, maybe they decided that blogging is not going to be a full-time career, like mm. it's uh, too insta- unstable. Yep. Um, so they're scared or like whatever. But for me, I don't really care about finances. I'm right. really, really, really bad with finances. I mean, yeah, well, you can even so, squeeze through the MRT gantry and uh, pass, pass, no and problem. No, no, that one shows that I care. But <laughs> now that I have sufficient money yeah. to lead a relatively comfortable life, yeah. I really don't care about earning money. Money okay. does not motivate You can tell me, I give you $10,000, go and do something, but I'm too lazy, right? I will just be, ah, fuck what it, I just don't do. Revenge. Only revenge motivates me. Ah, uh, the part about okay. not making your Let's not like call you. it revenge. Let's call it righteous indignation. Righteous. Oh, sounds good. <laughs> righteous indignation. Okay, yes. That motivates you. So, yeah. Okay. So, typically, all the blog posts that you see that I'm very passionate about yes. and that I put a lot of effort in is when I am very angry. Yeah. So. Because you have a point of view and you have something to express, right? Yeah, sometimes. And that, I would say, from an outsider's point of view, is that it's also one of your secret, your formula. Right. Maybe you don't realize it, but that you have a you have a point of view right. that but stands out. Man. How do you go and get a point of view if you don't have one? No, because you think what? Right. If you have your own original thinking, because I feel that a lot of us we don't have original thought because we don't even know how to think independently. So we tend to think based on what media says. We oh. tend to think based on what our friends say. But right. I feel that you have a very unique point of view. You this is how you think, and then. Back then, there's no social media, but now with social media, it's very easy for you to, this is what I believe in, <laughs> and it's polarizing. Right. It just happened that you have a majority of people who agree with you, The si- I say the silent supporters, but you have very vocal haters as well. Yes. And maybe they are the one that make you so popular. Yeah, 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 definitely for sure. I thank you very much. Huh? So, <laughs> thank you, haters. <laughs> yeah. Guys, haters are not that bad. It makes you stand out. Oh, I love my haters. I, I love them. Like, it's, How do you yeah. deal with haters? How, I mean... If wait, wait, wait. Uh, let me complete the part about the yeah, saying, okay, like finish. what I did right thing, because I, I got so some point. Okay, third point. Okay, yeah. so I think like um, another part of it is uh, keeping up with the platforms. Mm. So in the past, it was like, you know, blogging was uh, the in thing. Mm. And then after that, people move on to social media platforms. Right. So being able to move your content there, and sometimes it's not that easy because you get used to a certain platform. That's like for true. example, YouTube is very different from blogging. But also that part I got lucky because I started working with uh, the Click Network boss, Jillian, okay. who taught me a lot about uh, video. Okay. You know, I was very unnatural and just not a very interesting person in front of the camera in the past. Yeah. I was just very awkward. I mumbled a lot and I would just say things like that all the time. And it's like over the years, started being a lot more natural yep. and knowing that when you say certain things, it will be good on camera. Do certain things will be good on camera, but wow. sometimes yeah. it's not. Because it's very, very different from blogging, you see. On blog, on the blog, just I can words. just be long-winded or yeah. use very difficult words or whatever. You, But on camera, you have to be quick, be interesting. And it's just, yeah, so I managed to transfer that because it was reading long form and yeah. then became short form like Twitter. Correct. And then it became like sort of Instagram photo Pictures. based. Yeah, yeah, and then also now obviously people have a lot more bandwidth so yeah. they watch a lot of videos. videos. So being able to sort of like move your content from one to another and moving my followers from one to another, that's the important part. You still need to move them and then retain them. So that's the difficult thing Got to it. do. So yeah. being, the, being first, that was one. Yeah. Number two is uh, being able to move from platform to platform. So go with the trend, mm. right? That's number two. Yeah. From okay. my point of view, three would be that you have a point of view. Mm. How about what other things you felt? Just now you say like keeping consistent with like... And being consistent uh, yeah, with not, your not, content. Yeah, you have to keep giving. And I feel that that mm. part is like, it's tough lah, because unless you are genuinely very passionate and you really, really like it, it's yeah. very tough to keep this up for 16 years and keep giving content, you know? At, like, at, I would say at no point in my whole career have I ever thought, I would never, I, I don't want to post anything anymore. I just want to be an unknown person. Like, I, I want to give it all up and move to uh, unknown island and just live there. It has never happened in my mm. life. I love sharing. I always liked it. So I love creating content. I love editing a photo, posting it up. That has always been... Like your passion. Yeah, I so I, and luckily this passion has not gone away. La. Mm. So even now when I'm sharing with you, it yeah. feels like I'm blogging. It's the yeah. same kind of joy that I'm having. Like, I mean, yeah. conversation, just like spoken form. Yeah, so sometimes I feel if you don't have it, you don't have it, then how? There's nothing you can really do about it. Yeah. Understand. You keep forcing it, you also wear sien. So what do you think are the modern day influencers doing <laughs> wrong then? Wrong? Yeah. If you're, I... you're like they are sincere, <laughs> right? You're like big sister. <laughs> well, and if you're watching this, I don't know if you're gonna watch this, but if you're watching this, what advice do you have for them? Well, I feel because they're living in a more difficult time. Eh? 
like you said, yeah, yeah. attention and so much competition. Well, I think that, like what I said just now, it needs to be from a place of passion. And I don't like it when people ask me, hey, I want to be a blogger too, I want to make it my career. So yes. what should I blog about? And like, why are you even asking me? What, if you don't have something that you want to write about, why are you blogging? You, you blog because you oh. want money? That is not going to last you. You know, Very it's just... Nice. Okay. People can tell that you're doing it for money. People can tell that you're not sincere in your sharing and you, you seem desperate. Yeah. You're trying too hard. <laughs> you're trying too hard. Or that you're going into social media to be famous. Correct. That famous cannot be the end goal. It has yes. to be a fruit. In a way, your, yeah, your, it should be a byproduct. A byproduct. Yeah. Right? The main purpose is that you want to share, you want to kind of make an impact. Yeah, correct. In your own, yeah. Your and, own and way. it absolutely makes a difference because yeah. at the start, I, 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 when I started blogging, it just sounded like I was shouting into a void, you know? It, it sounded so natural because I really didn't think anyone was watching. Yeah. Yeah. So it, that's how I feel that people who go into this field, you should genuinely want to share. And think about it if you're not getting any money, in fact, it's giving you grief, would you still be doing it? Mm. Yeah. So the answer is I think a lot of people, they say no. They just look at influencers getting sponsored, flying, flown business class, this and that. They want to do it because well, I also want all those. Yeah, they see all the glamour, but yeah. they see all the sweat behind it. Yeah, right? correct. Yeah. So maybe we go one more level deeper. So a person wants to share, uh, must, be, must it be an area that they are good at or just an area that they are passionate about? I would say the passion is more important than being the good. The heart. The heart yeah. is more important. Yeah, you can be funny and just do it wrongly. Mm. It's fine. Like because you, you you can learn along the way and eventually keep doing something over and over again and you're open to learning, you eventually get yeah, good, good at it. Yeah. yeah, unless you're very, very stupid lah, then cannot help you lah, you know. <laughs> but you just need to keep doing it because and you will keep doing it because you like it anyway. Yeah. Got it. So passion is a very good starting point. Yeah. And how you know your passion kind of bear you fruits is when people start to pay attention to you and that's when you monetize Correct. the influence. I mean everyone has sort of like their own secret mm. skill, right? Mm. You can kind of focus on that. Like if, for example, I really like cooking, yeah. then I can be like okay, sharing about cooking and that can be sort of like my niche, mm. you know? So you may not be better than any everyone else, but you can be more passionate about yours than Correct. anyone else. Correct. And then eventually yeah. you'll find your voice, right? Yes, yeah. Ah, talking about voice, how do you find your voice? Like, it started off with you <laughs> renting or just... No, not even renting. You're just sharing your life right. to Void, right? Yeah. You're just blogging. Uh, I, I remember you said it's a form of therapy. Yes. But it was very certain that as time goes, there was a very distinctive voice. Like, today I'm pretty sure if I read something, I can tell this Sasha's voice if I read it. But how do you develop that distinctive voice of yours? I didn't... Okay, you don't like this answer because... No, just I, tell us. Because I, I didn't. I didn't. I was just like that. Just being yourself? Yeah, it was just like how I talk to my friends, I would just write like that. Well, it's scary to and, be yourself, right? And it's just uh. like because a lot of my articles are like argumentative. Yeah. So I always feel like as along the way I learn as well mm. that, you know, for example, that you you have to preempt what people would argue with you about Correct. and give your defense first. Correct. Yeah. And stuff like that, you just learn along the way of what works, what doesn't work. Sometimes it's like, you know, you post a photo on Instagram, you know that this is going to get a lot of likes. Like, for example, I know that any photo that is lovey-dovey with my yes. husband will get yeah. a lot of likes. For some reason, people really like it. Yeah. Even though I personally don't like it. I, I, but it I, resonates I, with people's emotions. I don't know why people like it. <laughs> okay, when I see a, like, a couple photo, I'll just like, roll my eyes. Like, it's yeah. very boring content to me. Correct. I'd rather be looking at like babies or like uh, nail art or like yeah. makeup, That's like stuff like, like that. That's what about. I like, yeah. But people really like it. So when I post, in the back of my mind, I will know that this photo will be good. So I better make sure I edit it more properly and I better put a better caption. So things like that, like it's a little bit, you know, you start to learn. And then, for example, now if I take a photo of, uh, okay, for example, I kill a lizard, I'm very yeah. proud of myself. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think it's an interesting story. I want to post about it on Instagram, but the next day I drop 200 followers. Because lizard are very ugly, yeah, right, right? On Instagram, nobody wants to see a would dead lizard. It? So I will post up because mm. I, I will think that it's like, uh, it will make me drop followers that like subconsciously you won't want to already. Understand. Yeah, maybe it doesn't have to be a very try hard thing. But then I will think like, but I really want to share about this lizard thing, but I'll go and put it on IG stories. Yeah. Or I'll go and put it on Twitter. Correct. Because that's Before the avenue Twitter. for it. Like people don't care. They won't yeah. unfollow you for it. So it's good that you brought us to this direction. So we, let's go even, let's go to the different areas, right? Right. Uh, we all know that content is very important. Right. right. What's your thought process every time you come up with your content? Like, is that a question you ask? When you, before you post that content? 
because you have an eye for content like the lizard one was a good, a good example <laughs> I followed that lizard uh, the conversation about lizards and how she felt that lizards were doing it on purpose <laughs> you know? so I thought that was interesting uh, you did another one which is like if you're stuck in an island you know who would you choose you know the good looking guy or the, the bad looking guy but there were conditions as well like one can right. survive one can survive so, right, 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 so, right, right, the one is um like, Stephen, Stephen or Lim. Stephen Lim. Would you rather be stuck in a, on an island with Stephen Lim yeah. uh, so, so, or yeah. alone? Or be alone. But Stephen Lim is somebody that you either like or you don't like. So would you want no, to No, no, no. The, the crevice of that is yeah. that nobody likes him. So oh, no, okay, I, yeah, we'll choose a person that like in general, like girls are like, oh, the one lah, you know? Like, yeah, you started talking about, well, if Stephen Lee know how to cook a chicken, then maybe because survival skills are I would, I would definitely stay with him in the island, even if he's like, you know, like, Hopefully he's not rapey, but like yeah. yeah. But at least a man can like take care of things like Which you know, I'm what? alone, I should die. <laughs> yeah, survive yeah, you make up your way to survival. And right? I'll be so lonely, I'll be like, oh my god, I'd rather talk to Stephen Lim than nobody for True. ten years. Yeah. But you see that's the thing. You are very on point, right, when it comes to content. You huh? Really? Very on point. You even <laughs> come out the controversial post that you did on IG where you make do a make up like Rosma, right? right? That was very controversial, but that tweet a conversation. So I'm just curious. How do you how do you do it? How do you know what to post? How do I, you know that this one should work? This one won't work? No la, I don't ma. Because on Instagram I also post things, but sometimes they don't work. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it's just ads. Like they're not that interesting. But it's just sometimes you just hit jackpot law. Like Is that but you fifteen years of hitting jackpot, is that a pattern? But I don't get that many amazing posts a year, you see? Okay. It's like I post like maybe a hundred things a year and two are very popular. Very, you know, sometimes What's the pattern then? An, when you look at all those that work, right? Right. Generally, what's the pattern? What do people like? What do people like? Mm. Uh? Like you say lah, lovey dovey stuff. Humor. Ah, uh, humor. Okay. Humor. I don't. I don't believe in the lovey dovey. I think that that doesn't give you true followers. Uh. People are not liking you for your personality. That they are not loyal fans. They are just there because they they like the photo. It's a very superficial like because they just like seeing romance. They, they it makes them oh, oh and they then like, they were like yeah. But it's not because of you. But yeah. Would they care to lend you money if you are like freaking getting sued? These people don't give a shit. Got okay, it. so people who give a shit about that are people who read your deep thoughts and everything, like, you know, and agree with you and they truly support you. So I believe that kind of fan or that kind of follower is a lot more valuable than I don't care about impressing like people for like, you know, the likes lah. Correct. So that's why I personally, I don't like posting on Instagram. It's too superficial for me. It's not my thing. Mm. I much, much more enjoy posting on stories because it can be ugly, it can be funny, Correct. it can be rude. And it's real. Yeah, so it, it just feels a lot more like my normal like good old days of blogging whereas Instagram is very curated and I understand that it needs to look nice for yes, people to follow you correct. but not my thing lah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I get it. So for you, you find that when you have a point of view like you, you, you say something that you care about even if you know that people might not believe it but because it's authentic to you, you care about it, you put it out there mm. that to you is a, considered a good post. I guess, yeah. Expected. But there's a lot of field posts also that people don't remember. Because I post on Instagram stories all the time. Yeah. So you remember, for example, the island one, right? Yeah. But maybe another time I'm posting about my food, you don't care what, right? So occasionally it's just bingo. Law, like. could, it, could it be that you just simply don't try too hard? And that's why you bingo. Maybe. La, no, but because for us, it's like I'm not so analytical. You know, but like, eventually, like as you grow older, you talk yeah. to a lot of people all the time. You can see sometimes people is in their face, right? You talk about, let's say, I don't know, finance or whatever, yeah. then they're just like... Yeah, they're falling, yeah. Right, falling Ah, right. but if you talk about like, oh, blowjobs, ah, then you can see, <laughs> okay, wow, then everyone wake up. So, eventually... There's some yes, there's some yeah. universal topics. Correct. So, yeah. so, after a while, you realise that, okay, there are certain things that I say, subconsciously you know, that people will be interested in. I got it. This, I think we can play. That, in other words, what we're saying is that at the beginning of us building our, finding our voice, just talk more. Right, share more everything share more, that yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah. Throw everything out there and mm. see what sticks. Yeah, correct. And so see what pattern there you, is. You will be able to get feedback because it's so easy to get feedback nowadays. Because your followers so, are actually your best yeah, teachers. Correct, and it's it's to me right. It's not a very deliberate. Thing. It's not like I have a notebook. Oh, this one a lot of likes. I will do this. Yeah. I will do this. Or like, but I don't. It's just very subconscious because it's in our brains like you yeah. get a hit of dopamine every yeah. time you get a like a comment right. then when there's interaction it feels good you and remember. your brain is addicted to it so yeah. the next time i know i confirm to post this thing yeah so it's i think it just comes very naturally Fantastic. yeah so there are so many brands going out for you and flying you everywhere right what do you think is the reason why they engage you um I would say that like probably the ads are quite effective. Like mm. usually brands come back to me and say that it is lah. And like effective means what? That means like there's a lot like of itself, well, it sells well. That's ROI lah. Yeah. people, your followers actually do trust you, or they, yeah. they actually do what you ask them to do. Uh. You're influential in that way. 
in a way like yeah, but why so. why were they so willing to do what you asked them to do mm, i i think right that it's just that over the years i've been very critical about like pretentiousness mm. about being dishonest online that's yeah. always my pet peeve i really just really hate your, right? i hate fake like you know fake like people who are like online one way and then in real life another way yeah. or like they just are very because to me right you must see that this blogging thing is something that's very sacred to me because it is the core of who i am but um or, or rather, yeah, la, who I'm known for. Yeah. Without it, who am I? I'm yeah. just a pink hair girl walking on the streets, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's, this, to me, is a very sacred, very palpable thing. And I always felt like when you create content online, it should be authentic. And that's how I started out because I didn't have any ulterior motives because none... You didn't even know you could. Yeah, but, yeah correct. Yeah. So it was very pure and very beautiful. And I really hate it when people, I, I can sense that somebody's there doing this craft just because they want to earn money. Mm. Yeah. Or just to get likes. So I, in a sense, I, maybe I'm like a... a a uh, porn star, right? Who I just love filming videos because I love the the art of it, right? Yeah. But I see other porn stars doing it for money, for money. and it just like irritates me because I know that they're not even enjoying the sex; yeah. they just hate it. You but like, the art yeah, form. you just want to, yeah. To me, it's an art form. It's like it's oh, beautiful. I'll it's say, my baby, I'll right? Say. So okay. I always criticize people who are like that. And um, so, for example, like if you remember the gush cut controversy, like part yes. of it was that I said that how come these girls like they just like you know like get sponsored a phone like a LG phone like Correct. and then they say what well, best phone ever but after that like one month later I can see you're still using your iPhone yeah yeah see bit talk right so like you know, I will I will criticize stuff yeah. like that so I think over time um, it has cultivated an image for me where mm, true or not um, my followers always feel that I won't anyhow advertise for things that I don't like yeah. because it's where I strongly believe in and I always criticize and I believe that over the course of 16 years nobody has managed to find like you know me advertising for something that I genuinely just like. hate yeah. you know I mean of course over the years I also start to realize even if I don't like Crocs doesn't mean somebody else Correct. doesn't Correct. like it right doesn't mean it's genuinely bad product it's just that I don't really like it so I can factually still say wow this one very sterile very comfortable good for doctors I can still say these good things about yes. Crocs and I'm not lying because Correct. it's true but I'll only be lying if I say this is my favourite footwear and I think it looks so nice yeah and the worst right? thing is I see like uh, one day you promote not you but some bloggers or uh, some Instagrammers they'll say oh this is the best food ever mm. uh, then the competitor will hire them yeah. then they say this <laughs> is the yeah, best yeah. Yeah. your best like not very best it's anymore. not authentic yeah. or your best is depending on how much money people pay you correct and that means that yeah and I think I think followers are not that stupid like they can sense that you're doing it for the money and it just really irks me um, yeah so I think over the years I think brands feel that you know it's um, they, they want that la, that honesty that, and authenticity yeah so it's a little bit of a stamp of approval that okay she said it's good means it's good yeah yeah it is, she's not one of those people who's like you know anyhow can say that it's good because we pay her so a little bit like that yeah. speaking of that like the the food thing like yeah, yeah chicken chicken like roast chicken company just tried uh. to like pay me like thirty thousand dollars to do a video and like pretend but, it's not an ad and just uh. compare them to other like brands and say that theirs is the best Oh. And I just rejected it. I was just like, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay, so good. So yeah. $30,000 thirty thousand dollars to eat a plate of uh, roast chicken rice. Yeah, that's a Yeah, I always get very confused <laughs> that, like food bloggers, for example, they get invited for food tasting, right? What if they taste it and the food is really legit not good for them? Do they yeah. post or do they not post? Like, they are being paid, you know? Maybe they post less, I don't know. Yeah, it's, so I find Maybe that sometimes they don't it's care very la. Maybe they don't care. Mm. They just anyhow lo. You know, so I, I learned something from you, which is everything starts from passion first. Then even taking the money becomes a lot easier and more authentic. Mm. Because if you're already passionate about a brand, the brand knows that, then they hire you, it's very authentic. Man. You make money, yet you're talking about a brand that you like. But if money becomes your only focus, then you're just going after brands that are willing to give you money. Then your words have to keep changing. Then at your core, you're not being authentic. Mm. So I, I thought that, wow, that was a good tip. Start from passion. Yeah, that, that I learned from you. Mm. Now you're really good at YouTube and Instagram. Like, some uh, quick tips. You know, people are taking quick notes. Tips, uh. Quick tips. What can we do uh, you know, to succeed on Instagram? Maybe start with that first. Um, okay, I'm giving all these tips, but like as I said, I'm not very passionate about Instagram. I don't really mm. like Instagram that much. Lah, but these are the tips that work, I guess. People do giveaways that will work. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like all these things because it just feels very like insulting my like pure thing, you know? Like, <laughs> again, so I know already. I know. Your, the, the ultimate uh, tip for you is irritating. just create good content that is authentic to you. But it will no longer about. work in this era. Sad, huh? Yes. And it's very rules, sad. Right? It's very sad. But it's true. And um, these tips are like giving giveaways. It's a desperation. I don't like it. Yeah. Like, it's just like, you know? You, <laughs> okay, okay, never mind. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting too naggy about that thing. So, 
um, you know, or being consistent with your content, yeah. uh, always posting, and uh, kind of being able to identify what. Uh, okay, so Instagram page itself. Don't talk about IG stories, yeah. People are very superficial. They like looking at pretty things. Yeah. So. Uh, Take good photos, good quality, good lighting, and make it make your feed consistent and have a certain aesthetic. I have I have felt that things with a very, uh, very niche kind of vibe to it, it's very Helpful. easy to get popular. So, for example, if you do makeup, it's all purely makeup. Don't suddenly go and post your dog. Yep. Like you know, unless you do dog makeup. <laughs> yeah, then okay. <laughs> you know, but uh, keep it very consistent yeah. because uh, what happens is if your tags and all that are always about makeup, then somebody who likes makeup will go on the popular page and click on like the explore page rather That's true. to click on one if you click on one makeup post only suddenly all makeup posts will come out so it's all the related posts will yeah. come out so for example if you like gay boys in like gyms then you click on that then all the gay boys in the gyms will yeah. come out so it you, you are very niche yeah so right. it's bad for people like me because I'm very generic right yes. so like it's very hard for me to pop up there and gain followers from explore page yeah so you got to play by the algorithm of the platform it, correct yeah how about YouTube any tips on YouTube YouTube but uh, I think for YouTubers, just be very consistent in your content, and like um, it's it's consistent really tough. Consistent as in post often, la. Post often, and yeah. how often? It means like once a week, every day. If you no like, every day is too kuat sangai dila. Every yeah. day only like those kissing nice or like ah, Logan right, Paul will do it. Oh, that's really really tough, man. Yeah. Even like so. once a week to me is very very tough. So I post like maybe two two three weeks one time. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So mm. it's about. Get your your consistent is not about daily or what, but if you go to post every month, then you just make sure every month you post. Don't Correct like sometimes you got a lot of posts on that last post. Is that yeah, what you meant? Yeah, but okay. you know we're going back to call of the things. It's like why are you even growing IG followers? Oh, what are you actually? We can pick up right. So so at the end of the day, still go back to the call. If you're creating content out of passion of that topic or out of passion of sharing to your followers, that is always true. If you are posting because oh it's work, something is wrong. Well, but we cannot saying? we cannot deny that it's very important in today's life. So I understand yeah, why people. Need, we need to do yeah, it. that's why I understand why people need to do it. But it's not something that I respect. You mm. know, you're. It's like you're making a movie because you want to, you want to earn money. Then it's just like I yeah, I, I do I do my movie because I like doing movies. So it's just like a bit like. Uh, you know that actually goes to show that at the end of the day, right? At the core of content creation, uh, is genuine care for the craft and genuine care for your followers. Mm. That, that should always But if you don't have it, you don't have it, right? No, you don't have it, then you shouldn't even be on it. No, but I, did, I it. disagree with it because I feel right. like it's necessary and it does give you a lot of good things. So I can see why people want it. Even I cannot, if they're not it's authentic. very easy for me to say, yeah. uh, hey, why must you be so like that? Uh? Why, yeah. why do you want so many followers for right. what? Then, but it's very easy for me because I already have it. Yeah. I have never not had it. And I have all the good things that come with it, mm. right? And I would never understand how it feels like to, okay, like I can maybe understand if I go to a room full of 10 million followers to feel insignificant because mm. my following is so little yeah. or be less of an actress yeah. for because my fellow actress has a lot more followers than Got me. Yeah, yeah, right? Even though my craft may be better than her, I may be more passionate than her, but she might be hired because her numbers are higher. So that numbers still so do it, matter. It, it still matters. It's unfortunate and I hate it, but it does matter. Got it. And so yeah. we suddenly got to just grit our teeth and yeah. play by the rules correct. So while even trying though, to keep Correct. So even though these tips that I give, right, are yeah. not, you know, I... You I, roll your eyeball at yeah, all the tips. Not roll eyeball, I just very sian that the reality is like mm. that nowadays. And I just think it takes away from the beauty of uh, con creating content online. La. I feel yeah. that it's um, uh, how I look at it, right, mm. is be smart about it, play by the rules, but always put your signature on it. Mm. I, I mean, you cannot, what, what, uh, don't breathe out, I hate oxygen, I don't breathe, I'll die, mm, right? So I, I, but I might not like it, yeah. but play by the rules. So I think that's what I'm hearing from you. Play by the rules of YouTube or Instagram. Instagram is pictures, YouTube, YouTube is... YouTube is How videos? to do well on YouTube? What kind of content? Get good want? videos, law. So you try High to... High quality videos also. Yeah, try to film videos that are like, they don't need to be like super long or like, you know, like um, good quality, like, yeah, interesting. You can... Mm. Just, it's very difficult to say what's interesting yeah. because sometimes weird things go viral as well. Right. Um, but yeah, you as I said, well, go, just go and post the things that you like and you will start having a feel of what is good and what is not, what people like. Based on the amount of likes, based on the amount of yeah, dislikes the and the amount of, content, uh, yeah. amount of uh, comments on comments it. Comments and mm. engagement, got it. So the recap is just post based on what you like because when you're passionate about it, it's more sustainable. You'll post more often anyway, correct, right? Correct. And then when you throw everything out there, you see what sticks. Uh. Yeah, correct, and you go like, oh, this one sticks. Somehow, yeah. I post But sometimes more. it's like, I, I like it, I don't care what people say. You know, my, my friends always tell me, yeah. 
like my influencer friends, they always say like my IG stories are too rabak already. I just what's rabak? Rabak like anyhow do oh, like, anyhow. Like, like, low quality <laughs> like uh. just I really don't care one. I mm. they will actually take a video, go home and put it in a nice frame, put some nice caption and, and post on I, or like cut it and edit it and I just can't remember that. Over there I film finish post. Yeah, it's your style. I just do Uncut. that and I yeah. I refuse to become like that because it makes my IG story become another Instagram which I hate. Mm. So I want to love it. I want to be able to be happy when I post it. Yeah. And it makes me stress and have anxiety when I post something on Instagram because I know if it's a shit photo, I'll get very little likes. And it that is very difficult not to feel affected. You know, I, you would think that over the years, it's like... I'm surprised feels, that you okay. say that. that no, but sometimes you get some like, less follow, you, you get affected. I mean, like if it's significantly less, yeah. like let's say it's 10% of your usual, it's yeah. hard not to feel like, what's wrong, why like that? You know what I mean? So... It's do you delete just, it or do you just like I won't it? I won't delete it, I'll just leave it be lah. But yeah. subconsciously I think some part of my brain will lodge that maybe that was not a nice photo, I just don't post like that sort of photo photo. Okay, so, so you often, make a mental huh? note. Yeah. Final question in the tactic segment, right? <laughs> you live for your haters. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I if you see your Instagram bio, it says they're bashing haters since two zero zero three, right? <laughs> so so I thought that was cool. Uh I know you're you're very fired by your haters, but not all of us are. One hater, right, can yeah. like cause us nightmares and, and we are very afraid of posting. I know of a lot of my followers who resist social media because uh, they don't want to get flaked. They don't right. want to get negative comments, even right. one of them. Right. What advice do you have for them? How do we become more brave? Well, I mean, at the, end of, at the end of the day, I think that like these haters, right, are yeah. really just losers. I have never met a hater who turned out to be a really like successful and um, powerful like person in life yes. or happy person. They're just like angry losers and it's just like, why are you affected by what these angry losers? They're just like, like basement dwellers, like I don't know what the fuck they're doing but they're just angry, people are angry at everything. I'm just like, oh my god, I feel so sorry for you that you are like that, your life sucks. Them. So it's just like, uh, I, like, nice. you know, so, so we need to have a visual image of how these haters look like yeah. and then we don't take their words too seriously correct they just hate everyone they're just angry people mm. so you know it's like don't need to bother about them and I think you know it's you need to understand that without uh, love then like if, if you have love there will be hate so you want people to like you there will be pe- you want to be popular there will be people who hate you. Yeah, there's a saying mm. that, um, a very Zen saying, mm. that if you accept, if you let compliments affect you, mm. compliments and criticism are two sides of the, uh, the same coin. Right. If you embrace compliments, then so do you have to embrace criticism. Yeah, but criticism always get magnified. So like, mm. like at least like maybe 10 people a day tell me, oh, you're so pretty. But I, I hear, I literally hear none of it. Yeah, but the bad one, it sticks your head. Yes, right? Why, right. Why I, just, so I just need yeah. one for a person to say, wow, you look very fat in that photo. Uh. And I remember that, but I don't remember 100 people telling me I look so gorgeous. You know, it's just like... So how long do you take to get over it before the next post come and then... I, I don't like, I don't, I just get fired up. I don't get upset. So for me, that was my, I don't know why and I don't know how to advise people how to do that because my default reaction is to get angry and defensive. Okay, and you protect it, but, but you say you get fired up as well as yeah. you prove them wrong. Sometimes, so, and I'll just post about it. I, then, like, for example, now, you say I look very fat in that photo. I will just think, well, you are very fucking rude. Leh. <laughs> Even if I am fat, right? It's not your business. Yeah. Why are you so rude? Your mother never bring you up properly, is yeah. it? So I will just go and search their photo. You think you're very skinny, is it? Then I'll go and post their photo. Uh, to prove the point and then yeah. it creates I'll just say, excuse me, do you like it when I say that you are fat? Mm. Right? So, like, why would you say that to me? You are very rude. So, like, I'll just be rude. Bella. Then that will, that is what I would do. Yeah. I, don't, I don't let it go to my head and think, like, Oh yeah, how are like just okay? Can you explain to me how normal people react? No, uh, normal people probably not fight back. Normal people would then take yeah. that and like I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat, and then two points. Either they they self you know change it and go like no, that's not true, or they will do something about it, right. or they will really be very defeated. Huh? But yours is the aggression method lah, which is you say I'm fat, right? Let's see who's fatter. <laughs> you know, and, and you turn it around and the best part about you is that you don't just turn it around for your personal entertainment, no. <sighs> but it became entertainment for everybody else as well. So, but, but how come, saying, how come uh, the focus is not on how rude that stupid asshole is? Like, I would just be like, huh? You said that? Then how I don't see how skinny you are. La. Then I'll just I be like, even if the person is skinny, skinny, I'll just be like, your mother also fat. La. Well, I, well, it depends. I, I feel that it depends on your moral ground, right? Mm. If, let's say you are born in an era where fat doesn't mean a lot, it's not a negative word, right. then fat is fat, la. it's reality. Mm. So it depends on the person also. 
But mm. I feel that that's the thing why we cannot social media is so open, we cannot control what people say. Yeah, and they're but all we, crazy people anyway. Yeah, and we can yeah. we can only control how we see it. So I like how you see it. And I'm not saying that you guys need to do it exactly like her, but that's how she deals with it. That every <laughs> negative comment that comes away, she look at it as a challenge and that challenge fire her up and creates content. And she also see haters are just losers. So that, that minimizes the, the sting, in other words. Mm, and I also really like attention. So any form I would like. I'm attention. I would like a bad dog. <laughs> you know, go and pee on the ground. Just, and then get scolded. I'm so like, hey, you pay attention to me. <laughs> and then you turn it around and yeah. create a conversation and do a poll. So guys, uh, that's Xiaxue for you. And uh, if there's one thing I learned throughout this entire interview, it's about passion to the craft and being authentic to your values. And then when you put yourself out there with these two traits, the right followers will come to you and they'll celebrate who you are. Ah, good summary, good yeah, summary. Yeah, <laughs> I, really, I really learned something, like take notes later on. <laughs> so, Siashi, I have a lot of followers, right, who are insurance agents, financial advisors, real estate agents, mm. okay? So, it's important that they build their personal brand as well. Mm. What advice do you have for them? Personal brand, ah. mm. Mm, I think, like, for salespeople, it's just, in general, you need to give off a feeling like you're not out to earn people's money. Ah. Earn a commission of them. So, I think that that is the most important thing. Okay, the bottom line. Yes. So okay. you need to sell without really selling. That's oh, the thing. That's so it's hard. like, yeah. Okay. So I don't know. I so don't, don't talk about products. Mm. Don't keep talking about your products. Correct. Don't mm. don't seem like you're whole day like trying to just get money. Mm. So I feel like for me, I, I think like, for example, I think about like, you know, our, our friend Daphne's dad, like yes. uh, Dennis Wee. Dennis Wee. Yeah. So uh, he's a very famous real estate person, right? But yeah. when I, he's also very well known as, for example, being a foodie. Mm. So he judges like food contests and stuff. Daphne told me lah. Right. So um, I think that gave him some fame as well because mm. he would be on newspapers and stuff and right. he himself cooks really well. Yes. So like, you know, when you see a famous person, and cooking has nothing to do with me, right? So yeah. I don't feel defensive about it, right? Because right. when I see a real estate agent, I feel immediately a bit defensive. Yeah, there's a war already. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like, why are you trying to sell me or what? I don't, I'm not sure to buy a house, ah. don't talk to me. Ah. You know that kind of thing? Yeah. So like, when, when he's talking about how, how he loves food and all that, right? And he's on newspapers, he becomes a famous person that is not known for selling things. Correct. And because he's famous, people trust famous people to not scam Correct. them. So I think like in that sense, that really works for his personal brand because you know him, you trust him because you see how he's like, you know, like he's interacting with hawkers or whatever. You, you, you see that side of him that you think that he's a trustworthy person. Okay, seems like a good person. Maybe when I buy a house, I think about him. Got it. So it's by association. In other words, it's fi again, find something you're passionate about, mm. have, a, have a voice about that, yeah. be really good at it. And then because people know you, like you, and then they respect you for that piece of knowledge. And when they find out that, hey, you're a real estate agent also, or you're a life insurance yeah. agent also, mm. by default, I will transfer that trust to yeah, you. Yeah, correct. La. That's so, one angle, right? Yeah, and I just feel that it, it should never be just about how good you are as an agent or whatever. Because if people sense that, it's like, you know, it's got, got it. ulterior motive to it. Uh, one yeah. thing I, I teach my followers is uh, add a creative slant. Mm. Uh, to their boring topic. I mean, insurance on its own and real estate on its own is already well covered and it's very boring if you talk <laughs> about very it. Boring. Plus, like what you say, if I talk about it, immediately people are very defensive, right? Yeah. But everyone comes to social media to be entertained. Mm. So if you can add a bit of the, the surprise or intrigue or the fun element to your topic, it becomes interesting. Right. So like, I have one follower who uh, is very good with humour. Okay. He's very funny as a guy. So I told him, why not you put humour into your, your insurance post so you create memes. Then right, he became very well known. Yeah. Uh, another guy loved reading and draw mind maps. Right, quite cool. Uh, mind yeah. maps. Yeah. Mind maps. Yeah, he's oh. just very good at comic drawing, but mind maps. Okay. Okay. So I told him read every finance book ever written, every published, and then do mind maps on that. Like a summary. Of La, the and book. do it on Instagram because ah. Instagram is about pictures. Okay. Well. Okay. So. So that becomes his niche. Exactly, and then yet you still can have your personal signature on it. Mm. So in other words, guy, look for something that you are good at, you are talented in. Or look at something that worked outside of your, your, your vertical. Then you go and study photography, uh, bloggers, or go and study all the other niches. Look at what they did that make them stand out and ask yourself, can I put that into my old traditional? I call it a mashed up. I think it's very smart. Yeah, because there's no there's yeah. nothing new anymore. It's yeah. just creative. Because I feel like the guy doing memes is not trying to like. No, like, I'm just trying to make money. you laugh. <laughs> yeah. you laugh, I still have a point to make. Yeah, and it makes you like a ball. Yeah. So yeah, people will trust you. Oh, but I, I like mm. your point. So so guys, even if you don't want to talk about insurance or, or, or real estate, it's actually okay. I think you just okay. gotta be authentic and find something you're passionate about, build your fame around that, your influence around that by transference you can still do a good job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to give Sasha a test. Uh, ah, uh, you know, I test? always think that she'll make a good coach. You know why? Because 
coaches are supposed to be honest. Uh. <laughs> I, I ever been to a cooking class, right? Okay. And I cook uh, chicken curry. Okay. It was bad. I know it was bad because I tasted it, I puke. And then uh, uh, I still so remember bad, my man. teacher you was... You, it, it was, was horrible. Oh, it just doesn't you taste good. Ah. No, the, make, the taste just doesn't match. Uh, my, my teacher was Lisa Kasim. I went to uh, that school, the very, very Atta school. What's that? Cooking school. ABC. Uh, uh, T O Tots. Oh. I went to Tots. Uh, so I cook and then I let her try. I watch her. She tried. I know it was bad, right? And she said, mm, that was a good try. I was like, wow, impressive. You never puke and you're very encouraging. <laughs> right? So I thought, wow, teachers need to have that element. But I feel that as a coach, as a mentor, you need to be honest. Oh. Because you need to tell the truth to your mentee, right? right. Then the mentee can change. Uh-huh, but not so bad that people just give no up. La, well, la, we won't like, slam the person and mm. say that you are lousy. Yeah, uh, I think you should just give up and never be a champ. <laughs> no, we won't do that. So I, I prepared three, uh, three of my followers. Mm. And I'm going to let you take a look at their content. And then, um, of course, you guys will be able to see as well. So you just look at maybe first one minute. And then you, you tell me what comments you have. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, by a, a lady called Ile Go, right? So that's uh, Elated Ill. Elate. Let's watch a video. And welcome to my channel. Happy New Year once again. This is too far already. Oh. So uh, tomorrow is Suzhou. Suzhou is Pai Ting Gong in, in, in all the Hokkien people world. So um, I'm, I'm Hokkien and uh, obviously, right? So uh, yeah, so I am, my ancestors are from this place called Zhao An and uh, it is known that the people, the women from Zhao An is very very fierce. Huh? So I hope it's not so obvious over all these years. But uh, once upon a time my mother-in-law asked me then I, and then she said, oh isn't it like the Zhao An woman is very fierce? Then I said, mother, come to now. I think I'm losing a bit of interest. What is her point? So now she's coming So the question about this um, uh, Pai Ti Gong one is also, I think like let's touch a bit on that since you know uh, tomorrow is, is it's that special day so from a Kong time right he told me before so we, we will ask my so you see so I'm going to stop the video there. Why? Right? Oh. Because people say... Oh my god, YouTube, it's too freaking long. Yeah, it's five minutes. Oh, okay. Right? Five minutes. Okay. So, first of all, tell me one thing you like about this video. Is there something that you feel is worth commenting? This is, by the way, her eighth video. So she have never done videos before. And this is a very... The eighth one. What do you well, think? I like it. Okay, well, yeah. it was in focus. There's it some was what? In focus. It's almost in focus. In focus. Like, it's, uh, sometimes videos are so bad that it's not even focused, okay? Oh. Okay, so it was quite so a nice shot. Cine- like, uh, good filming. That. Yeah, the filming is okay. It's like good quality. You can yeah. tell like the bouquet at the back is nice. She bothered to dress up. Um, and to me, it's a bit funny because from the start, it hooks me a little bit because you were an auntie. I thought yeah. she was going to be funny. Yeah. Uh, but it turns out she's not very funny. La. Oh. But <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel she's like hilarious funny. She's not yeah. like... Like, you know sometimes when you see aunties, they are funny because they are a bit like... They just like, look funny. They just do exhibit very auntie yeah, behaviour. Like, yeah. you know, so that's funny. But she's not loserish enough to be Correct. that. Correct. Yeah, she's, she's still, still very, a bit very cool. classy. Yeah, she's quite poised. Am I, is she your follower? No, no, oh. no, no. Followers, yeah. But okay. I told them, I told them already, I invited Xia Xue and <laughs> Xia is going to give you a critique and you must be able to take the critique. If not, don't send me any. Say, yeah. Give uh, it to us. Okay, so, so I, I like it that... So don't have to cover up your words. But, um, so far, yeah. I think that the uh, the... The audio and, and video quality is very clear. I okay. know it sounds like very stupid praise, but it's very important. Okay, the moment, it. especially audio, video is still okay. But like, as long as your audio is not clear, people will not. If watch. I can't hear you, you lose my yeah. attention. So that was crisp and yeah. clear. It was okay. I saw your like, attention started dwindling. Correct. Uh, it, 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 I feel it yeah. maybe it would be better if because it says two bar. So is she doing this like number every day? She does one or what? Yeah, every okay, day. Okay, so uh, if yeah. I had a preemptive feeling about what this video is going to be about, that's still okay. But because you abruptly show me like this, yeah. 我不懂他在讲什么, what, uh, what is she talking about her? Point. Yeah, like what, what's, your, what's the point words, of this video? In other words, when we do videos, we need to get to the point really, really quickly at the beginning a of bit, the video. Yeah, right? Or yeah. at least tell people what to look up or for. Or maybe the if there's a clear title, like yeah. it says, like, uh, let's say the title says, My Thoughts for Tupa. Ah. Then, okay, then I will know it's just your ram- rambling thoughts. But I yeah. feel like it was getting somewhere but not really getting there. So like, what, why are you talking about your guxiang and like, yeah, what's the point you're trying to make? Actually, what's the point? I don't know yet. I have to watch the whole video. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, and, and that's another point. Uh, another question I want to ask you. You see, this is a Facebook video. Right. Five minutes. Is that too long? Way too long. How much Way should too uh, long. a Facebook video be? Okay, Facebook videos, right? You really need to just hook people in because they are there for the short-term entertainment, yeah. not for... YouTube is 
more the platform for long term. Okay. Uh, if you want to do a Facebook video, it should be just literally a few seconds because like studies have shown, right, yeah. that 99% of people just watch it without audio at all. Yeah. So it's good to have subtitles, hey, which she, she subtitles? no, she doesn't. Does uh, she? Okay, wait, let's check. Huh? Uh, no, no subtitles. No subtitles, yeah, yeah. So we need subtitles for Facebook video. Yeah, so I think subtitles are very important. Guys, take note, uh, 99% people actually... Okay, I don't, don't know whether that is true. Or Somebody at least told a, me. a big majority. Look I'll check huge, huge majority. Huge majority. Huge majority, including myself as well. Because we are usually watching the train, yeah. or the cab, or sometimes... And you are not interested, why must I on the oh, audio? We are actually at work while boss is talking. Correct, right, correct, watching correct. YouTube so you're watching on mobile, and then you're just like very distracted, right? So it really needs to just hook you in first. So that, that first, it will be a good thing for her, yeah. for example, to have a, a flashing title at the start. Yeah. So the title can be a, a screen with which says like... Um, uh, uh, my thoughts for Tupa or right. something that's more hookish like uh, or you know. she's talking about fierce ladies or she can start with yeah. uh, why fierce ladies are the best kind of wives for you or uh, something, like something like that or maybe yeah. like drama on 2-8 uh, okay uh. then it hooks people in then they want to know what happened right so like yeah so it is way too long and it needs to be a lot more concise and as she as she's going on about it I'm just like What's the point, right? Yeah, yeah I saw, yeah, I saw. You I'll, were very patient. You yeah. were actually about that was about a minute. Mm, Got actually, it. Actually, what's the point of the video? I don't know yet. Okay, don't so know. we have to f we have to watch the entire video. Okay, so I know. guess it's just a, like a vlog. Yeah, it's, I think it's like a vlog, but like okay. you said, like, vlog must have a point, right? But why why is she even posting vlogs? Like she's trying to build uh, a personal brand. For or? her, it's building a personal brand. Oh. Yeah, and her her followers are all women. Mm. Uh, all the Nuichang women. So mm. she got, why is it called elated elated? Right? Because uh, her mission is to help women find joy oh. in different aspects of the life right, right, work right. Uh, health happiness oh. so all her videos all have that what, kind what of she quality like, she's a financial advisor oh, interesting right, right. right so she's okay. one example of what you said you don't have to talk about insurance right yeah it's about showing who you are and then mm. people just drawn to that okay yeah. I, I'm not like 100% sure like how how much women out there really feel very uh, how to say uh, attracted to this whole like women empower women thing mm. I feel that there's a good amount of women like me who are very yeah. repulsed by that yeah. like I really hate it like the moment <laughs> she posts something like women yeah. empower women so the, the start if Derek no she don't have no, she just posts elated no confirm have, have uh, yeah, yeah I saw so this this whole elated, thing yeah. no have you see oh yeah. women empower women I see women empower women I just yeah. completely turn off so I, would you say I will that? not even watch it but but some people are like it this is subjective yeah. and maybe that's why she, she make a stand yeah and Polarizing, ma. Correct. But she, so, you probably will not follow her. Yeah. But there will be women who Correct, really who believe like in that. this thing. And yeah. that's okay. Yeah. I, I guess that's but the But to me, yeah. to me, yeah. I personally think that it's not good to sound preachy. And this sounds preachy. Mm. I people a lot of people online they don't I mean a lot of audience, they don't like to feel like you think you're better than me, is it? Why you constantly trying to teach ah. me things? Like they just don't really like that. So, so how do we tone down the preachy? That, that is a very preachy statement to me. It's just oh, completely... just the statement, women empowering women. Yeah, it's, it, you, you're trying to tell me that you are one of those women. It's obviously a humble brag, right? So, oh, yeah, right? Okay, you, okay. you believe in it means you, you do it, you right? Did, yeah. So you're one of those women. Lah. So it, it just makes me feel like, ugh, like, you know, I just <laughs> am very turned off by okay. it already. So I am not 100% sure like whether it's a good thing or bad thing. I, I feel like I need to do a more focused group to ask, but mm. I personally don't like it. it. And so, I believe most people wouldn't like it And either. would you say that if, let's say, she removed that away, and she just more of just talking about you know whatever she wants to talk about that will be easier but it'll be better it's a little bit better because you remove yeah. the lens because this is like very politics right so it mm. goes into feminism and all that stuff mm. so it's very polarizing I if, if that's her brand then that's what she wants to brand herself as a feminist or like whatever that's fine then mm. you attract that group of people but it's a very polarizing opinion and it uh, I think it turns men off also uh. so it's like a good part of it is like you don't want to turn the, the male audience off as well right like because yeah. they can still bring you business what Exactly. Yeah, so men are generally very intimidated by this kind of like very feminist, I hate men kind of women. Yeah. Like I she's giving me that like feeling of her the moment I see that those words. The words. So so that again is also also means that you see because people wear different lenses. Right? So Correct. we need to be very careful that every time you put a message out there. Correct. It is a very it's a very polarizing message in the yeah. first place. Like there are a lot of people who feel that it's like it's like there's this wave of like, you know, like hardcore like radical feminists that like yeah. a lot of people don't like. So it's like you, you should know when you say something like that. Got it. Ah, yeah. So for example, let's say you are a, a famous gay insurance agent. Correct. Then you shouldn't put things like, you know... Uh, insurance for gay men. Uh, uh, no, Whatever. like uh, 
like uh, love wins, for example. Uh, yeah. This kind of thing, like, it, it, it's like, okay, this one's still more acceptable, but it's very preachy. Yeah. Like, why are you putting it on, yeah, on, on it's, your it's insurance? Right? Yeah, it's just like in your face. Like, yeah. that means, like, I feel like when I watch your video, you're just going to preach to me whole day long about, like, you know, um, this kind of things. Lah. So, mm. I, although I don't disagree with it, in fact, yeah. I support your cause, yeah. but I just don't want to be preached to. Got it. So, it, it seems like, if I try to deconstruct what you just said, right, is that every piece of content that we put out there has to always make sure that the follower is at the center of everything what, that we do. Not always lah. I because mean, if you know, it's like that. women empowering women, yeah. right? It, it feels like the mission is the, is the centerpiece. It's not you wanting to communicate a message to the follower. I don't see a benefit of that video. It means every video I put out there has to have a benefit that if I follow her, I'll go like, yeah, I want to watch this because I want to benefit from it. True, true, true. So yeah. it's keeping the yeah, followers yeah. in mind. My mission statement probably yeah. later. Yeah. Which is also why I felt that sometimes when we introduce ourselves, hi, mm. I'm Eric and I'm a professional blah speaker. Mm. People okay. don't care. People just switch on the video to care about if I'm gonna give you 60 seconds of my attention, what can I get out of this video? Yeah, yeah, correct. I either need to be entertained or I need to be learn, learning something so new. Let me give you another one. Yeah. This one, uh, um, Katina Kasim. So hers is uh, <laughs> not a video, it's just okay. a post. Okay. You, you see what I think. Okay, so what? This is the best gift for yourself. For yourself. So it's about investing in yourself. Mm. Learning new skills, exercise, what is changing she? book. Oh, this one, financial advisor also. Okay. Uh, oh, unit trust advisor. I don't even know what that is. Unit trust is an investment product. Oh, okay. Uh, and then she asked, what is or was your best gift to yourself? Uh, Share comments below. I really don't like this post because again, it's very preachy. Mm. Um, mm, I feel like all this, I don't learn anything from this. Like, it's just, I already know all these things. Mm. Like, who doesn't know that healthy food is a good thing for you? But we still don't do it, right? Yep. So, <laughs> it's like, there's no... Point. A bit, there's no point and there's no twist. Oh, oh no, no, like, no, maybe don't say there's no point. There's no new point. Yeah, there's no new point uh. and I feel like it needs to have a... In order for me to read something and be engaged, I feel like it needs to have a conflict and resolution almost to it. So it needs to present me with something and then give me something after that. Got it. Oh, nice, nice. That means every post is like a story because a, a bit, story always yeah. have a conflict. Yes. And then, and then a resolution. Then you got the conflict captured my attention. Correct. Correct. Then you give me a resolution yeah. at the end of the post. So, for example, how to transform what she wants to say yeah. would be... Because uh, the point you... is the best investment is to invest in yourself. Yes. So, but it's just like the conclusion already, right? Yeah. So maybe you can start off with this year, you know, has been a really bad year for me because I let myself spiral. Uh, I let myself become fat and blah, 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 blah. So all these things, I wasn't working. And I realized that, you know, because I haven't been giving my a gift to myself. Yes. Yes. And this year, my resolution is to like blah, blah, blah. Okay. So then... Uh, then you can say uh, after three months of trying, I realized that I have dropped eight kg. I have blah and blah blah. That's a and okay, after. so then then it makes the story more interesting. There's a flow of yeah. things. Yeah. And just now, the minute you say that I, I've been letting myself go, right? Immediately it got my attention. Yeah. You know why? Because you think about it. I, I now I get what you mean by being preachy. Being preachy is like standing on the fiftieth floor saying, "Hey, you see here, the view here is very nice." Mm. And then people might think that you're show off. Mm. But what you did is you first start at my level, which is first floor, mm. that I you know, was letting myself go. And mm. anybody who also was in the same situation will relate. Correct. Then they'll go like, okay, got Gong Ming already, ma, got yeah, resonance, right? Then go, okay, so what do you do about it? Mm. Then people will be more interested. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. Oh. You, you don't want to see a post and you're like, what's, what's the point of your post? You're just trying to sell me, is it? Like, what? Mm. what? Got you it. Just so, preach so me. just like, now was what's the point of your video? So that was it. Correct. The second one is, um, yeah, you Same, got a point. It, it applies to point, the right? video as well, right? Oh, so okay. if the video she starts off, for example, I said drama, drama is who it, right? Yeah. So you start off by saying, okay, today is an eventful day, huh? ah, ah, that's then a okay, then line, then yeah. you make people hooked and they yes. want to know what what happened. Why eventful? Yeah. yeah. Or you know something like that. Then, so then, tell, then you can continue your story. Facts tell story sounds yeah, pretty true. Correct. Even for video and correct. social media. Mm. Wow. Okay. I learned something. Yeah. Even uh, even something like for example, she want to talk about how her gu xiang the, the women are very yeah, fierce, right? Yes. So, but I'm like, why are you telling me this? Okay, it's better for her to start off something like, oh, I tell you, it's so difficult for me to find a husband. I every time quarrel with my husband. Uh, really because right, I telling you, my, people from my gu xiang are very very fierce one. Uh, or something like that. We got are it. people from my village. Uh, all cursed with 
uh, divorces or like whatever. So that's why I'm at my third marriage. Okay, then this hooks you in and like, yeah. you know, like it's a bit of a storyline. But she so, just goes on. Like, so so I'm the like, statement what? number one is critical. It's like first impression. Like, uh, it has to hook you in. But I'm also seeing that statement one usually arouse curiosity mm. or statement one is a statement of agreement. That means like you said something and I'll go like, oh my God, this is me or so. And then it gets me hooked. Mm, maybe. Wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, another thing I learned recently is that every piece of content that you create must elicit an emotion. Okay. If there is no emotion, I mean, you have to decide, do I want to create anger in people with my post? Boredom is your to... emotion. Yeah, <laughs> we're so good at by default boring people. Yeah. So I guess that's not a good emotion, guys. Okay. Unless you intentionally start off by saying, today my purpose is to bore you. Actually, you will not elicit boredom. You know, you elicit challenge. How yeah. come bore me? You actually got my attention. That's true, that's true, that's true. Yeah, so I kind of like it. So elicit emotions, mm. all right? And we can deconstruct that later. But oh my God, hey, we should really do more of that. I like how you critic stuff. Very refreshing. Oh, okay. Very refreshing, okay. <laughs> well, too bad I only got two. Uh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. I, I got one last one. But this one, sure. to me, I feel that uh, really, even I myself feel that it needs to improve. So good luck to you, Mr. Poa. <laughs> okay. Let's see. This one. The title is We Live in a Strange World. Okay. Well, okay, something fast ponder. Oh, this is really bad. Okay, what what is he like? What is he trying to do? I don't all know. financial advisors. Oh. These are all financial advisors. So he's just posting to share with his friends or like the point is a It's a page. Oh, okay. Mm. So um, but it says there's something for us to ponder upon today. Mm, okay. At least I feel he has that hook. Thing, yeah? So something for us to ponder today that, that draws you in That's a little bit. That's the purpose bit. of the post. It's for okay. us to ponder. Okay, good. Okay. So the job. So so that gives me a, uh, uh, how to say, how to, that gets to the point which is that he is trying to say that he was thinking about it this. Pre me la, to whether I want to look look at the post yeah. or not. Because so at least you know like instead of that just saying something, you are saying that this is what made me feel emotional today. So he's saying that he pondered about this today. Okay, that makes you look at this, and hmm. uh, after that. It's terrible already because okay, why? it's very preachy, very, very, very. Okay, preachy. let's read it first, huh? So the poor don't understand how hard life, how is hard life of the rich, mm. and the rich don't know how difficult life of the poor. Okay, mm. okay, very proverb lah, very preachy. Okay, it's very preachy lor. So yeah. it's just, it's not just about the preachy. It's about he himself patting himself on the back by saying that he's not one of these people. He understands. Oh, wow. So he's okay. saying that I'm not one of those rich people who don't understand how it's like for the poor. I'm better than them. So when you give these people people the vibe that you think that you're better than people, it's very turn offish already. It's just like, like nobody wants to see humble bragging. It's very mm. eh, right? How can he turn it around? Mm. Because, okay, let's see his point. His point is that... There's no point. He, he He's just eliciting... Uh, compliments for himself. That's what he's doing. He's fishing for compliments. Or it, it, are you saying that he's trying to put a point of view and, he is and trying just gather agreement of people who also agree with him? I just feel like he's, he's humble bragging. That's ah. his whole point is humble bragging. Learn a new word today. So, humble bragging. Yeah, it's like KK, I'm not bragging but I am. You know? Okay. Like, yeah. Like, oh wow, today I drive a very nice car. Oh, yeah, this yeah. car needs to change but she's a very expensive car. Something like that. That means you post no, not no, for no, the sake not, of not like that. Not like that. Yeah. It's more like, uh, for example, uh, okay, real life example of I read something like this. Yeah. Today, a uh, rich guy, okay, say that he uh, saw his uh, driver was like uh, sweating while waiting for him. Therefore, uh, yeah, I thought about it. I think I'm going to give him a $50 ang pao. <gasps> so I think that, you know, uh, we should really be considerate towards people who are poorer than us and think about how hard they work. And uh, $50 may not be a lot to me, but it may be a lot to him. Oh no! Okay, so that is humble bragging. That is like... Okay. It's so okay. many elements of irritatingness, you know? Okay. So this is quintessential, like, so humble ranking. The, the spelling of this also not fantastic. So mm. it's like, halfway through, I don't really know what you're talking about already. And yeah. the whole point of it is that then the whole, uh, okay, true or false, still okay, comment below. But I feel like this is very, trying to gain followers, uh, to well, me. Yeah, true or true, he actually said. Oh, true or true, mm. even worse. Actually. Okay, <laughs> yeah, because I so, like, used to seeing these kind of things, right? So it feels very uh, uh, spam. Like those normal go viral videos always yeah. have these kind of things and it's just very... Uh, oh, by the way, guys, uh, remember, I, I just learned recently on Facebook, right? Mm. You cannot ask people to comment on your post. Huh? Uh, Facebook now checks the post oh. and they will penalise your post. Huh, why? Correct, it's a recent algorithm. So like, you know, last time we always say, if you agree with me, like this post. What's wrong with that? Right? Uh, no, Facebook doesn't want you to lead people to do likes. They want more authentic likes. Yeah, ask Facebook yeah. to go and die. La. They are the most unauthentic platform. Oh, people? Facebook. Oh, Facebook, no choice. Yeah. Like you said, Facebook is the worst. But that's the number one advertising platform. <laughs> I hate Facebook. <laughs> okay, anyway. Now, 
Okay, so but let's see how we can help him, mm. right? So uh, I guess his point is that he's trying to say that life is very ironic. No, there's no point. He's just trying really? to praise himself. There's no point. Really, uh, no redeeming factor. Uh. I don't feel like there's a point. So could you say that actually in today's world of social media, right, mm. less of trying to share proverbs and and beautiful nice quotes so people like it some people like it. i don't like it it okay, may be subjective so, do you so like it for me i love it because i love motivation no but do you do you feel this that one? this motivates you no, i this one i feel that i don't see how it relates back to me okay but it does elicit a feeling like because it makes you feel clear for yeah, this person this one, right? I, I feel that uh, i like this one i like that we live in a strange world like the poor got to walk mouth to get food like rich just walk mouth to digest food i thought the picture is good for me because it's true. Mm, okay, yeah, this yeah. photo is okay. But, but it's not his in the first place. it did not place. answer a question, which is, so what? Yes, correct. Or, why should I care? Yeah. Or, what's in it for me? Yeah, so I feel, okay, a better way to say this would be something like, if you want to post something like that, you can mm. feel, you can say, okay, I saw this photo today and it made me feel um, really emotional. Uh, just the contrast of these two people's life and how uh, we are so lucky to be living in a first world country like Singapore where we have enough food, mm. you know. Um, uh, maybe you can say, uh, oftentimes, like, you know, I forget how lucky I am and today I'm just feeling very grateful. Okay, so that's not so preachy. Personal reflection. Yeah, a little bit of okay, that. But it. even then, I'm a bit like, uh, a bit like humble bragging also. I feel like it's mm. like you're trying to draw No, but if that's your real opinion, then it's fine. Correct, but why are you yeah. even saying this? You're saying this you to hope that people will say, yeah, uh, what's his name? Sean or whatever. Mm. Sean, you're so kind. Mm. I, I wish everyone has a kind heart like you. They're obviously trying to hope for this kind of comments. That would be mm. the kind of standard answer oh, that would you also say give. that like you know especially financial advisors or, or real estate agents it's so important for them to share their opinions mm. so that we can also see what values they have so that when we make decisions we can make it I don't believe that it is uh, your real value because mm. I, I, I Did, see you, you both you I, don't feel that 100% don't believe I how have, would it make you believe that this is a real post uh, like how can you tweak it by doing a video, maybe by showing his facial expression? Very difficult. It's very, very difficult. Because I feel like the moment mm. you're trying to show me, you're trying to convince me of something, you have an agenda. That's what mm. I feel. So I, if, no matter how, like the person say how kind the person is, yeah. I won't feel that you're very so kind. So therefore, some things just cannot say one. Now. You just cannot. Even worse, like, you keep posting about it, I, all the more I feel like you're trying to sell me this image that you're very nice. Mm. And it makes me very irritated because it's very preachy. Mm. Right? So I... I mm, if someone say about you, then possible, right? Can, then okay. Then or maybe you are just posting about how you are doing charity where you get uh, show a photo of you helping an auntie. Yeah. Uh, okay, then at least I see that you're actually doing something. And uh, okay, then your caption, you keep it as unpretty as possible. You can say, like, visited uh, my, my weekly mm. visit to the hospice today, mm. entertained the old people with uh, yeah, like uh, 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 jackpot bingo, for yeah. example. I invented the game. They really enjoyed it. Look uh. how happy she looks. Okay, then there's one Just post. Stop. And then you every week consistently do this all the time and you find something interesting about your visit all the time. Then I will yeah. feel it's not so pretty. See, so, so what I'm hearing from you is that actions speak louder than words. Like if you really want to show a certain quality about mm. you, rather than borrowing a quote and then try to write on that quote, uh, like show us your life and document your and life. how you're actually doing better, not, not just yeah. So don't service. create yeah. posts, document posts. Yeah, and always be yeah. kind of like aware that that, uh, that you are so-called humble bragging. Like, it does it sound like I'm complimenting myself? Mm. If it is, don't post it. Wow, okay, <laughs> yeah. this is going to be difficult because there's always a fine line between self-promo and... I mean, like, we all know, right? So then we put ourselves out there of course. to let people know who we yeah. are. Yet, if we overdo it, it becomes yes. self-promotion. Well, uh, like, for example, like, the, the way that I said it, like, today yeah. I'm very grateful uh, for my food yeah. and whatever. That also sells yourself, but it doesn't sound preachy. It, it's the difference between mm. today I feel very grateful for all the food I have versus don't forget if you have food, the poor don't have food, you know? Like, you, that's a bit like... Ah, uh, yeah. you're pressing it. That means I just share what my life, that's it. But I don't go and impost it on you mm -hmm. and go like, hey, you should and be doing the same thing. And grateful doesn't signify that I feel like I'm better than yeah. everyone. I'm just grateful. I know how to do so, bra bragging. I'll say I'll do all the charity thing. I'll say like, ah, if only more people can do it. They don't understand that. <laughs> that's why it becomes pretty Because yes, I impose it on you. Correct, right? correct. Okay, a bit fine line, that. fine line. Yeah. Okay, I learned yeah, something yeah, yeah. too. So, wait, that means... To not be preachy, that means we what, we cannot share quotes anymore, inspirational quotes, motivational quotes. That doesn't mean you don't have to because if it really is something that moves you, um, you can. And but so you know because quotes are very commonly used on Instagram and Correct. stuff. So when I see quotes, I just 
I cannot be bothered. They yeah. quotes typically sound preachy, yeah. okay? But there are some quotes that are still good and I feel that, you know, like, that it's about how you package Give the quote. Give me an example. Have you used quotes before? Uh, okay, so, like, recently, I think, quite recently, I did a uh. post with Dash. And, Dash is uh, a baby boy. Yeah, so he's Thank five you. years old already. He's about 18 kg now. He's getting too heavy for me to carry. So, there, I posted a photo. Um, I had quite a lot of, like, that photo of me carrying him. And because I'm, I'm very short, so it looks disproportionate, he's right. very big, he's no longer a baby, right, he's five. So, um, the caption was something like, um, you know, I read a quote once that said, there was a day where your parents put you down and never picked you up again. Mm. So, that quote just immediately kind of made me cry when I read it, because I was a mom, like a new mom, I was carrying him. And to me, it was like, wow, it just really evoked so much emotion in yeah. me, because I was like, I never want that day to happen. Mm. I always want to, him to be my baby. Mm. And it's such a significant day, but nobody ever remembers yeah. when that day is. So, I posted it and I said, um, I fear the day is coming. Uh, I, I, I said that I read this quote online and uh, it really resonated with me and how, um, you know, he, uh, I feel that that day is coming for, for me because mm. he's getting too heavy for me to carry. Mm. I don't know when it will be and it's like, you know, my, my emotions, lah, basically reading that thing. So, can feel it from her. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, um, it's not just a quote, it's your story with yeah. the quote. So you can make it work and it's, it's not a preachy quote in the first place, so that helps. Got it. Yeah. So you've so, got to put yourself into every post that you post. Mm, correct. Can I just borrow something and post, knowing that this quote is a popular quote. I'll tell you something, I've yeah. seen fake stuff. Because I know I follow some guys, right? I mean, they have nice bodies and all. Yes. They actually post, right? Not for the code. They post because they want to show people how strong they are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then they just added yeah, a Yeah, so it's there. so fake. It's so terrible. Like, I there hate was one posts. guy who, who has a nice body and then he only didn't shirtless. Then you go like, so am I half nude or half dressed? Something oh, like that. Okay. Right? But you know that he's just posting it so that he can. It's just a caption to, uh, yeah. Okay. But that's still okay. But I feel still like, okay, uh, I feel uh, like because that one is very obviously uh, trying to uh, yeah. fish com uh, compliments. Yeah. I don't mind those. Uh, like half naked girls that I say, do I look sexy? I, I much you rather that. that. Okay. Yeah. Then because you're upfront respect? about it. Uh. I don't like, like, uh, um, like, for example, I. Uh, for example, I just went to the gym or some irrelevant nonsense uh. comment that is like obviously trying to say like uh, oh, uh, oh, for example, the girl is lying down on a bed uh. like you uh, can see cleavage and yeah. all right? then the caption is something like haha, he took this photo of me, I didn't even know Oh, you know, but actually just like, the truth is You la, you're yeah. just trying to like get she caught like, yeah, like, to get off. like it's just them, you know So that that helps a lot, wow. I think. Yeah. So I okay, if I can draw something out from this, right, is that the next time round we post anything, including myself, mm. right? Instead of posting something with the intent that ah, this one will get me a lot of likes, instead would be, does this post even elicit an emotion from me? Because if it doesn't even elicit your emotion from me, why even share it? Correct. And if you're if it does elicit your emotion, you then should you be able to why, it, yeah. yeah, why that elicits yeah. an emotion. Yeah, correct. Oh my god, then that's your how we stay authentic story, and correct. yet still be able to get attention. Yeah. And if you think about the whole like dash carrying story, yeah. does it pain me in a good way? It kind of does because it says I'm yeah, good mom, right? That was not but you it will not immediately come off as I'm trying to get correct. you to feel that way about correct. me. Because we're very very focused on the point you're trying to make. The, the, and the emotion that you felt. Mm. And then everybody will be like mm. resonating with the emotion. Yeah, because everyone was once upon home carried by their parents, right? Yeah. So you, you can like feel it lah, yeah. And, but that quote is very good lah. It's not, it's not me lah. I, I mean, there's no bad quote. I just feel that the quote No, there are a lot of bad quotes. Like his quote is very bad. No, but if he'd been through that before, that means he actually went to do charity and he saw it himself. Like for right. example, he and his friend actually went to walk because they, they're very full. And, then, and they saw some people walk to back foot. If he actually saw that moment, it's an authentic moment. Okay lah, maybe. Then he find a quote to resonate that. But yeah. what, what what most of us probably do is, oh, today I want to share a motivational quote. Oh, mm. that one seems motivational enough, share. Right. But, it, it's, but do people no actually like it? What do you think? People, like you said, but people will always like motivational quotes, like how they see good Why? babies. Oh, so nice. Oh, I feel I don't good. Read it, like. I see it's in that form, I just True, skip. But there is no uh, emotional attachment to you. There's only emotional attachment to that post. Oh. That means like, oh, this post is good, but they never allude that it's because of you, you see. There's right, no right, link. Right, so right, I, right, I, right. I saw that very strong in you, which is you need to put your personal signature in everything that you do. Mm, 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 mm. And, and, and that's how you and find your voice. Don't be preachy. And don't be preachy. Okay, I learned that. Uh, Eric, don't be preachy. <laughs> the online world needs less Guys, so preachy five people. things we have learned today. Wow, that's very preachy. Okay. So, no, that's okay. That's okay. Preachy, uh, is, preachy uh. is when you 
try to tell people how noble and how kind you are. Oh. Like in a humble way. Oh. Guys, you know, right, yeah. in my whole entire life, right, I think there are five things I've done so well that I'm so proud of. No, no, this one is uh, this one outright. That's why I purposely yeah. uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. Bragging, uh. Uh, no, this is not humble, oh, this is okay. outright bragging. Oh, it's very hard to be humble brag, eh? Yeah, yeah, it's very hard, it's very hard. Okay, it takes a skill, guys. Mm. We've come to the very fun part of this show, hashtag highly sought after, where we're gonna get our guests to showcase their talent. And obviously, Xiaxue, your talent is makeup. <laughs> At least that's one of the talent, okay? Huh? And um, I'm just wondering, right, have you done makeup for guys before? Um, I did to transform guys into girls, like, but you okay, know, don't like, do that not, for like, me like not like straight, <laughs> like, yeah, makeup lah. Haven't yet, right? So yes. this is gonna be like your first makeup tutorial. Yes, I think it's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. and I actually do have a lot of people following me who mm. are guys, and they, they absolutely do not know how to do makeup. They don't yes. even put standard skincare. I think they also have a, a, a issue. I think most guys feel like they don't want, they don't want to. It's, it's a more troublesome. like a mental barrier for them. Right. They don't know how to, and they think that they're gonna get <laughs> criticized if they do. I got a friend so. uh, who bought a big bottle of very expensive aging anti aging cream for the husband. Right. One year later, it's still full. Oh my gosh. The husband's not using it at all. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, do your magic. I've uh, Earlier on, I had some light makeup, so I kind of patch removed it a bit. So we're going to see how Xiaxue does her magic on me. <laughs> right, okay. Hopefully, I'm still redeemable. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so I got some, some makeup for you. Mm. Um, just to set the context a bit, as you guys know, uh, we, we do a lot of speaking and cameras nowadays are very unforgiving. Right. So, uh, how do we make sure that we still look fresh alert not too much until we look mm. like a doll but right. how do we do it yeah i think oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay so i i will try i i don't like, claim <laughs> to be an expert you yeah. know but i think the key here is to keep the makeup very natural, Got looking. It. natural looking so it's very important to first find a foundation shade that suits your skin exactly right okay. so i see here that you have your Got foundation on mm. um I would suggest, right, for like more natural looking makeup, mm. we try not to use liquid foundation because liquid foundation is the thickest coverage. So uh, if you want to use liquid foundation, it's good to use a beauty blender that's actually wet. So you um, get l less thickness with the liquid mm. foundation. But this, how this, it looks like. yeah. It's very cute, right, guys? Look like a mouthy, you know, the, the brush. <laughs> Correct. So um, instead, I would suggest if um, the person has no like problem skin, uh, mm. quite relatively clear skin, to try to use uh, CC, like the cushion foundation, mm -hmm. um, that kind that is like a more dewy on. looking. Okay. Yeah. So if oily skin is not a problem, then the dewy looking one will be the most natural finish. Yeah. So any problem areas that you want to conceal, use concealer instead of overall foundation. foundation. So oh. just for that problem spots, you can put on uh, concealer. Mm. So like for, um, so shall we try to do that with, sure. I mean, makeup can it. kind of uh, replace it as well. So I'll do it for you. The, the person at Sephora help you match, is it this one? Yeah, no, so I've been always using this colour. Oh, okay, so you know your own colour. Okay, that's, so that's the best. Yeah. Very important to pick your skin yeah, colour. Yeah, I used correct. to pick a light one. No, 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 don't and, do that. Uh, Especially for like, guys. So no, weird. yeah. Because it, it will look very obviously made up. Yeah, because you, uh, you see, here will yeah. be fair and then here will be very dark. Okay, so I'm, I'm putting it at a more pointy corner. Mm. So that I uh, forgot to shake, shake. it. Oh. oh, I didn't even know you need to shake it. Just in case. Okay, so actually it's quite liquid. This mm. is okay. I remember using this and thinking it was quite thick. So mm. I'll just like, you know some problem areas on your like temple here. Mm -hmm. I'll just try to conceal it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But not too bad. I think nothing significantly obvious for you. Yeah. So it acts like a concealer. Yeah. So I mean, it's better to use a concealer, like a legit mm, concealer concealer. I would say the most powerful concealer brand in the world that I've tried yeah. is called Democo. D E R. M A C O L. Got yeah, it. so they have a very cool. famous con concealer that is for stage makeup kind, but it's super gao. So that one can conceal like a lot of pimples and stuff. So after that, we can set it with um, the foundation. Yeah. So I think your skin looks like quite clear. I'll just mm. do a very, very light. Usually, light if let's foundation. say I'm going on stage, right? Um, mm. Do I use this to cover up the whole skin or do I use my fingers first to patch, uh, use to like cover it up, then use this thing? Nah. That means Again. like, do I have to... <laughs> I see a Copy. guy asking. Yeah. So do I use this to patch up, cover my whole skin? You can just use this the whole... Oh, the whole way, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Do don't don't bother with the fingers. Okay, yeah. got it. So, let's just, we'll just put some at mm. the... Yeah, always like the redder right. spots mm. over here. And guys, it's important that this, what's this thing called? Beauty, Beauty Blender. Beauty Blender, right? It's a bit moist. So run it over running water. Mm. And after, squeeze out all the water. So that it's a bit moist. 
But make sure it's not dripping water. Right, right, right. <laughs> Just run like, it under the tap. Yeah. This is not water paint, okay, guys. <laughs> and then this one you have to aerate it after you're done. Because if it's wet, you can actually grow more. You. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you need to yeah. put your other uh, heat. La. No need. La. Just, oh. just make sure it's in a like a cool, dry Got place. It. Yeah, so. Okay, so okay, I will just. Done. Lo, lo, isu, jang, mm. long okay, just demo. La, ha. Oh. So, like, we giving advice here. So, I'm going to use the uh, your velvet mat foundation. So, this mm. one is actually sort of like a little powder to kind of oh. set, set the area. So, if you have any concealer on, just pat some on. Um, but it's also important to not put too much la, because then you have a very powdery look which will make you look very made up. Got it. Yeah, so it's better to kind of just have a more natural finish. So I like it that they, their sponge has like two sides. Yeah, why so, is there white and black? Uh, I think the white one is for lighter, like not so much. Then the black one is like for like really white on. So, yeah. so you see this is the white side and then this is the black side. Mm, so we're going to use different. the white side. Yeah, okay. we'll use the white side for like more okay. lighter finish. Mm. And we'll just dab the areas that are a bit oh, more oily. oily. Yeah, T-zone lah. Then the rest we try to keep it more natural because mm -hmm. I think people should change their like you know perception but like in general like things getting better guys just are very yeah. you know like criticized for very where, where do guys go for makeup to buy makeup is it the uh, Sephora I think they can just use the same products that that, that women use women, right? yeah because I was at Sephora and you you maybe it's just the timing. Mm. There were all girls. I could count the number of guys in there, probably three. And they are there not because they are buying. They are there to accompany their girlfriends. Right. Yeah. And then I was there was buying like, makeup, yeah. and then the the salesperson assumed that I bought it for like my girlfriend until I sh I chose a darker skin tone. And I was like, how oh, your your girlfriend so dark? Uh, I said no, it's for me. Right. 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 <laughs> Okay, so your skin Yay. looks fine now, I okay. think. Um, and then next, we'll just go ahead to blush. Uh, this, uh, not blush, sorry. Blush. Bronzer. Okay, so we use okay, a Explain brush. to them what's a bronzer. Okay, so a bronzer is a, a kind of like a powder that's like a darker brown for shading. Mm. So, yeah, you want to hold up this thing? There you go. The camera. Okay, so this one, um, it's good that you chose this colour, which is a matte finish. Yes. Some bronzers have shimmer in it, which oh you don't, you don't yeah, want. Yes. Yeah. So that will add shine, you know, sometimes for like, you know, I'm using the more shimmery Correct. ones. But for girls, for I girls. think it works. Uh, yeah, really. so this brush is pretty okay. So I, I would prefer using a not so fluffy one okay. with a bit more density. This, this side one. is more dense. Show them. So this, one, this is more dense, it's all club, clubs mm. together. This one's a bit more frayed. Mm. So I think for guys, jawline is very important. So I'm going to just try to highlight the jawline mm. for you. Nose also. Yeah. So Sharp nose nowadays, yeah. very popular. Okay, so it's always along the jawline. Yeah, so I prefer like a more dense brush because I feel it gives a more angular finish. Mm. Yeah. So just under the chin. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about this is that guys have 5 o'clock shadow anyway. So yeah, it won't look too unnatural. It mm. will just look like moustache. Oh. Yeah, just look like a shadow. Of Got it. So it's just line my yeah. bottom part of my face. Yeah. So just it's this, so this angular yeah. thing. So yeah. We just it. try to. Got it. Yeah. Put it so such that you have a sharp, sharp jawline. You guys are probably wondering, Ari, how come you need to do your own makeup? Why can't you just hire a makeup artist? Uh, you know, finding a makeup artist is like finding a hairstylist. Mm. Once you find one, you don't really want to change. Mm. I have a really good one in Singapore. But the minute I travel overseas, um, it's very hard to find one that's suitable. Mm. Then you just have to be your own makeup Yeah, artist. so got to do it myself. <laughs> okay, so this one is for the nose contour. Mm. So I'm just going to use the same bronzing powder. It's mm -hmm. good that it's pretty light, so it's not so obvious. Like, yeah. you can tell that I have contour yeah. on, right? So you right. don't want it to be too, too, too obvious. obvious. La. So I think the, the yeah, for guys, we'll just highlight a little bit more of the nose bridge so it stands so out a bit more. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just dabbing. I'm just testing the colour here. Okay. Not much color, so you can mm. just oh, with a little brush that looks like okay. that. And we just I can it. just use my paintbrush, right? I got a watercolor. No, paintbrush. please don't. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we, we won't go overboard because mm. otherwise it can be seen and it's like not so uh, natural anymore. Got it, so it's from the eye all the way yep. around. So around the socket, you mm. just highlight socket. the bridge mm. and look there. There okay. you go. Okay, so it does look better. At least it makes your nose sharper, right? Mm. The last thing I want to ask you, right, is eye bags. Like, a lot of our speeches, at least my speeches are in the mm. morning, and I have, I wake up usually with puffy eye. Mm. Do I buy a concealer to cover it up? 
mm. or uh, what, what can I do? A foundation to cover it? Uh, maybe you can try putting a bit of a cold compress on it, like uh, those Rifa, you know, Rifa rollers, mm -hmm. like those metal ball rollers. Yes, yes. To like people really say that it really helps the puffiness. Okay. And then after that, you can like put concealer. You can use the Domoco one that I said. Got it. Yeah. Got it so okay. <laughs> so that one is a really like good coverage. Yeah, that but make sure fresh, you huh? set it with foundation because it's a bit oily. So after that, you have to set it with a bit of powder. Okay, so mm. uh, let me see if I can get it right. So first, use that metal roller, mm -hmm. and then after that, reduce put the on, puffiness. Uh, reduce yeah. puffiness. Then after that, put on uh, concealer mm. right over here. Then mm. after concealer, cover it with the foundation powder or foundation cream. No, not this. The Powder. the powdery one. Got it. Yeah, so, to set it in okay, place. Got it. Yeah. Very clear. Yes, it's not yes. very difficult. Eh? So I think I have another suggestion for eye bags because yes. eye bags actually look nice. I always draw on eye bags, but people think eye bags don't look nice. Yeah. But eye bags don't look nice only when they are low. So when it's low hanging eye bags, sometimes people have two. Uh, then it yeah. makes you look very old. Got it. Right. So, here, so for um, you, you have eye bags too, but it's this side is a bit more uh, severe than the other yeah. side. But when you smile, you can still see the tight one. Correct. Yeah. So. You can try to emphasize but because the it's a bit darker, so I don't like dark because dark eye ma. Oh yeah, no, the color is a different thing. So, ah, so I still must cover it off. Okay. So what I do is I emphasize the tight one, which is this one. Yes. Where young people have it too. It's the old people that have the yeah, lower yeah, yeah. one, right? So you try to emphasize this, and this doesn't look that obvious anymore. Understand? Yes. So sometimes I would okay. use like an eyebrow pencil, and I would even kind of like um. So like a, this, this is the eyebrow pencil lah. So it's a bit dark, I'm a bit mm. concerned, but let me just try to dot yeah, it. Try. Okay, so you smile. Okay, so we can try to, okay, don't smile. Okay. So we can try to sort of emphasize this one, the tighter one, to make the, the less tight one look less obvious. Okay? Okay. And this has the effect of making you look like more smiley and more approachable, I feel. Mm. Mm. Oh, I can't wait to see. So when I draw on eye bags, people are always like, are you insane? Like, why are you drawing yeah, on eye bags? Yeah, people don't want to remove eye bags. But eye bags actually have a, a, how to say, it makes your eyes look more... Bigger? Yeah, bigger and kinder. That's why the Japanese makeup, sometimes they will emphasize the eye bags. That's yeah. Nice. And yeah, so... Makes your eyes look more 3D also, like less 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 mm. flat, yeah. Especially like some of us are we have smaller eyes. Mm. So this right. also makes our eyes look Took bigger. Down a bit. Yeah, okay. Look up. Do you recommend uh, guys putting on uh, eyelid, uh, colour their eyelid so that the eyes are bigger? You know, I know the, the gothic one is a bit too extreme. Mm. But just a bit of brown, what do you think? Uh um, you see guys doing that? Like, I would, so I, girls do eyeliner, right? I don't. I wouldn't suggest that for you because okay. I feel like your eyes are big enough already. Okay. Um, and it's actually yeah. dangerous, guys. In the morning, I can't really I stab myself. Right. <laughs> it, that is also a bit difficult to do. Yeah, so if, if guys want to, sometimes they line the bottom for more like G, -G, -G Dragon kind of look. Oh, la. So okay. you can try to go for that as well. Okay, la. Yeah. Understand. If you do line it, try to line the waterline, which is under the... Um, so you have your eyelashes, right? Yes. It's under the eyelashes, so, Got it. so it's the not on top part. of the eyelashes. Yes, the okay. inside part. So you literally have to do this, and draw the inner part like that. Okay, I saw already. Yeah. Oh, mm. okay. So, so that's what Taufik like kind of look like. Correct, yeah. correct. Okay. And then the last one will be eyebrow, mm. right? Let me see your eyebrows yeah. now. Okay, so. So some of us guys we have very bushy eyebrows. Some of us we mm. have like mine very little eyebrow, right? Mm. What do you recommend? Should, should you don't have little eyebrows since you have quite a lot of eyebrow hair. It's just that it's got some like holes in it. But most guys have that. Got so it. Okay. I would suggest, right? Actually, a very good advice for guys mm. is to actually do embroidery, eyebrow embroidery. Okay. So you don't have to do it anymore. Plus. Because embroidery is like chest, like yes. thin little strokes. It's tattoo, right? It's still tattoo. It's a tattoo. Right? It's okay. just very thin hairline tattoos, but it will not last forever because it's less deep than okay. a normal tattoo. And um, you just wake up like that. So it looks wow. very natural because it really looks like hair. Uh, does it, is it painful? It's not painful at all. It's not painful at all. Yeah. I mean, girls do it all the time, so it's fine. Hey, but girls can take pain, no? No la, confirm can one. They put numbing cream for you. Okay, guys, so... Uh, oh, oh, actually it would be fun to do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but so... But don't you have recovery time? I see sometimes... Some, yeah, you just look very dark very for a while. You just look for, for a week and then you'll be fine after then that. Be, then you'll yeah, fade off. Yeah, you'll be fine. Okay, so maybe go for a one-week holiday <laughs> yeah. and then do your eyebrows. 
Okay, so we have a brow definer here. It's very yes. good. So it has a little brush. brush. This brush, right, is for you to brush out the, the colours that are too dark, that you accidentally draw too dark or like you want to make it more subtle and natural, you can use this, nice. this side. Okay. okay. I know it looks like so eyelashes, yeah, but it's not. So it's for so. the eyebrows. So this is the brow like pencil. pencil. Like. Okay. You turn, turn it around. Okay, so this is like a brown colour, I guess. Nice. You can show the camera that it's like a triangular shape. Yeah. So use the blunt side for the more like the colouring side of okay. things. And you want to draw like very thin hair like strokes. Then, then you use, use the, the fine one. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so I would suggest thing. like uh, it's a bit too high level for guys lah, but a brown liquid eyeliner to draw strokes, it will look more natural. But that will be too difficult yeah. to confirm. So <laughs> we'll try one hour. we'll try to just fill up some of the areas mm. that are, are um sort of more sparse. So you always draw along the direction of how the eyebrow lines look, right? Correct. Okay. I see you have learned. Mm. Now you know why girls take so long. It's a lot of work, eh? Correct. So we guys always think, how come girls take so long? Well, wait till you do it yourself, then you will take as long as the girls, if not longer. That's why I say do brow embroidery. Yeah, then save don't. the whole process. Okay, so towards the end, yeah. I'm drawing hair strokes. So it looks more natural. Mm. Using the fine one, right? Correct. But just now you're using the blunt end, right? The blunt end for the front, yeah. Mm, got it already. Okay. So you want to do shading, use blunt end. One draw fine lines, draw the sharp mm. end. Can you turn this side a bit mm. more so camera can see you? Okay. Okay, so if it, it looks um, anywhere that's too dark, you can use this thing to... Mm, to brush it off. Yeah, to brush it off. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend guys to pluck their eyebrows too? I think if it's too bushy, maybe. Uh, mm. But in general, I think unless you have a very severe unibrow, there's no, not really any need to. To do it, Because right? mm. there's a Chinese uh, superstition that like guys should not touch their brows because brow represents their luck. So if you cut your brow, it's like you're cutting your luck. Mm. What do you have to say about that? Don't believe this one, Nancy. <laughs> People like said yeah. that, like, you know, I shouldn't go and fix my big nose because big nose is Thai food. Thai food, yeah. Then they love to talk about Jackie Chan. Ah, ah, as his an nose. example, like, fuck off, la, there's so many rich people with small noses. Like, <laughs> Bill Gates doesn't have big nose also. Maybe it's not the. Maybe as long as your original nose is fat, it's good enough. Your luck is set already. So you change your nose, you still don't change it. Oh, maybe. right. Yeah, because mm. that's your, your destined nose. Ma. Mm. Anyway, I was very poor when I did my nose job, so I ah. definitely became richer. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, so I Yay. think it still looks very natural. Okay. We'll just try to clean it up a little bit more. Can you take your head down a bit? Mm -hmm. Wow, the eyebrow thing really take a bit longer. Oh. Mm, yeah, because you try to like get the shape. Will you make me look fierce? Uh? Like I always uh, say something dark eyebrow means that like very fierce. No, it doesn't. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it does. But it accentuates your eye, right? It makes people yeah. look at your eye a little bit more. Just, I feel like it just um, sets the face shape a bit more. Got yeah. it. And then with the bronze. Yeah, the because people with the eyebrows just look very weird last oh, one, anyway. True. Mm. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna turn around. <laughs> You're just letting me do this without like looking at mirror. It's like confidence level. Confident, man. of it's course. Just like, okay, very sure, trust. whatever. This is trust. Yeah. But I'm just going very, very natural, lah. Cause mm. I am like gonna train by my husband, right? Like you know, yeah. like even a little bit, I'm just like, can you put some concealer on this people? He's like, no. Yeah, does he? Uh, does Mike allow you to like do makeup on him? Mm, usually not, unless he's going for some very, some very events, important. Right? Thingy. Because I feel that at the, the, the makeup just makes you look fresher because there are days where you wake up and you have a bit of uh, redness on your skin no, yeah, or definitely. tiredness. Uh, which actually brings us back to another topic. Hey, you talk, talk, I don't oh. raise and Oh, yeah, yeah, I raise it. <laughs> <laughs> brings okay. us to another topic which is uh, skincare. Mm. It's another big topic. Skincare for men? Yeah, I mean, now, I mean, I'm sure it's no longer a taboo topic, but I'm pretty sure there are skincare a lot of guys out there. Yeah. Unless they you're married, bother. you have a caring wife or mm. caring girlfriend, you probably do not know how to take care of your skin. Yeah, they don't. I think men in general are more concerned about their hairline. <gasps> yes, too. Mm. Actually, yeah. Do you know you can do embroidery on hairline also? I did not know that. Yes, that's and really cool. So they draw this like black, like hair-like strokes yeah. on your temple. Uh -huh. So to... What about, what do you think about hair transplant? Um, if you do do it like 
uh, my advice is there are two different kinds. So yeah. one kind of hair transplant is they will yes. take a slice of skin and like take it entirely out and then sew it back again, right? So the scar is very, very painful. Okay. And very yeah, and then you take that piece of skin and then that all those hair will be taken out and, and put at the front. So the problem with that is yeah. a lot of you don't think about this. When you eventually do lose your hair yes. and you go bald, for example, you yes. want to really like shave everything off, you can see the scar. Oh dear, you never yeah. expect that the back will be ever shown to people. Yeah. yeah, but when you are bald, you can see that yeah, there is a scar. Yeah, one like Velcro mm. like that. Yeah, so it's quite ugly. So okay. I have a friend who actually went to do that, that method. Yeah. And firstly, it's very painful to sleep on also. So it's very uncomfortable because it's at the back of your yeah. head, right? And then secondly, it's like that the scar is there. Lo. What's the second option? The second option is to randomly pick um, hair from around the scalp mm -hmm. and just put it on. I think the second option is more expensive. Yeah, or buy a wig, lah. Is that? Yeah, yeah. Is it, I'll just go bald and owe it, lah. Yeah, but some people just cannot carry bald, yeah, yeah, and true, I'm true. one of them. <laughs> I don't think I can carry bald. Luckily, you still have your hair. Yeah, uh, hopefully for a while. They say that just look at your father. Mm. Your father is botak, right? Good luck to you. Is your father botak? He has very little hair now. Oh no. Sixty-seven. And because we use a lot of hair products on ourselves, mm. so it does have an impact. No lah, but they say like uh, balding men are more like uh, fertile. Oh, that's so comforting. That's that testosterone causes it. Oh. Yeah, I think, I mean, for girls, I think it's more worrying, right? Because you, you bald girls, a bit weird. You know, people mainstream has not accepted that yet, but for bald guys, yeah. People can accept but it. girls is not really a big problem, eh? Is it? They, they, have, they are less susceptible to losing hair? I don't hear girls complaining that much about it. Like Dropping they, hair. Yeah, they will just put extensions on or like... Oh, that's true. Mm. Or wigs, ah. Girls, there are a lot of wigs for mm. girls. More acceptable for girls to wear wigs. Yeah. I'm actually super open to wearing wigs. I did talk to my stylist. I said, one day, maybe I might need wigs. So I asked her to like, where do I buy them? And then you have right. to cut and I just put mm. on. So easy. Don't Correct. even need a style. Just make sure you're not in a windy place. <laughs> I always think it's very comical. A guy wear a wig and then the wind blow and then the, the hair fly. So embarrassing. <laughs> Especially if you're on stage. And then you can't find your hair back. It's quite secure la. I won't drop it. <laughs> usually like usually. Huh. You don't do very violent movements. Oh. Yeah, but the problem with wigs is that it's just very like um. People can tell. Yeah, mm. so you cut it, layer it nicely. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, right. Okay, so I'm just sweeping it out. There you go, nice brows, guys. How do you know? Well, trust. <laughs> okay, let me just make sure both sides are even. Mm. Mm. So got it already. So generally, a guy, mm. how much time to do our face? Give us a good time, so we. I don't know. It depends on how 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 much you want to fix, law. I guess. Average. 15 Average minutes, do you think enough? 15 minutes, I think, is good enough. Yeah. If you have eyebrow embroidery or even better, then don't you draw brows. Yeah, because like, I think the know. brows are the one taking the most. Mm, yeah. Correct. Foundation is easy. Yeah. Concealer is easy. Um, the yeah, bronzer? Brows. Bronzer the bronzer is also easy because here, here, yeah. and then here, and here. Mm. And then the here is a bit lo take a bit longer, especially if you have dark circles. Mm. But this is the one. So you're right. Actually, embroidery mm. might save me time. Mm. So, guys! I, I hope you like this. Uh, I, I do not know yet. I'll go and see myself in a short while. But thank you so much. Yay. Yay. So that's Xiaxue. Our very first, very, very first makeup tutorial with guys. <laughs> I'm super honoured that I'm the first guy uh, to get to do this. So I'm going to keep this for as long as I can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It has been so phenomenal spending time with you. I laugh a lot. I almost cry when you share about Dash. <laughs> and I learned so much about you. Uh, as, a, as a personality myself, I, I really take something off you. So thank you so much. Thank for you, taking thank time you. To share. Thank She's you. very busy, okay? I have to book her many, many months in advance to do this. <laughs> so, uh, you know, final words anything you would love to say to the people watching this? Uh, they, they come from different parts of the Asia. Right. Yeah. Uh, final words uh, yeah. um, subscribe to the channel because oh. Eric is wonderful. Hey, I, I, okay, it's not really authentic. I never tell her to do that, okay? But thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, especially because this is my first YouTube. Channel actually, yes, I'm very, I'm very honored to be the first. Yeah, uh, no, I know. I already intend in our grow episode. <laughs> okay. Uh, and guys, we would love to hear your comments. If you enjoy hearing Xia Xue, you know, giving her critique, uh, honest critique about the post, and you feel like you are in the mood to get some real feedback, uh, please leave a comment, share with us your post. If you have more questions, do that. 
uh, if there's one thing I've learned from my mentor, he said to me before that do not seek validation, seek education. So I think this will be a good mm. opportunity for you, you know, to get some feedback from people who are practitioners who have done it before. Alright, so if you're brave, I dare you, leave us a comment and uh, we'll hear from Shakshu. Yeah. Thank you very much guys, <laughs> see you in the next episode of Hashtag Highly Sought After. See you!